All right, are we on the air? Uh, hold on, please. And we're streaming. Take it away. All right. Call to order the Wednesday, July 8th, 2020 meeting of the Victorian Village Commission. The next Mud and League business meeting is at noon, Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. It will be, that meeting will be conducted virtually via WebEx, via a platform similar to the one you're on now. The next commission hearing will be at 4 o'clock p.m. Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. Again, a virtual hearing to be held by a WebEx. Uh, who, uh, the staff who will be participating, please state your names. Sarah Medwig, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Kimberly Brunelli, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Is that it? You both swear or affirm uh, the testimony you'll give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Very well, thank you. Uh, let's all introduce ourselves uh, as commissioners. Somebody. I know that Mr. Hisson is Jeffrey here. Hisson. I'm sorry, I didn't unmute myself. Jeffrey Hisson is here. All right, uh, is Sarah here? No, it's Sarah. <laughs> is Aaron here? Yes. Aaron Moriarty is here. Is Lisa Kothheimer here? I'm here. All right, and unmuted, and is Sean Conyers here? Yes, sir. I'm here. And Jack Thank Decker you. is here, so we have a full house. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the Wednesday, June 10th, 2020 meeting? So move. It's Conyers' motion. Second. Yes, sir. Uh, second, Moriarty. All right, I need to do a roll call. Moriarty. Yes. Co-timer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Pissum. Jeff. Decker. Aye. Four uh, zero one. Motion passes. Uh. Do we have a public forum today? No. All right. Uh, I do want to point out we need to cram elect officers into new business at the end of this, if we can. Uh, do we have a motion to enter the staff approvals onto the record? So moved. Is that a motion, Moriarty? Do we have a second? Second. Listen, seconds. Discussion. All in favor? Moriarty? Yes. Kodimer? Yes. Conyers? Yes. Hissom? Yes. Decker? Yes. Passes 5 nothing. Okay. Staff, what is first on our agenda? So we start with item three. Uh, the first two were moved to staff approval. Item three is 1210 Highland Street across last month. At, and this is now an action item. So this is to enclose a non-historic rear porch, uh, modify an existing first floor window into a single full light door with a transom. This was originally a French door proposed last month. Um, the porch is planned to have simple columns and a metal handrail that is taking into consideration the comments of the commissioners from last month. And they're modifying the second story to remove the existing windows and replace two windows matching the existing in size and spacing. And then installing lights at both entryways on the first and second floor. So items for discussion, um, the existing rear porch is non-historic. And the applicable standards here would be 3116.11, which is standards for alteration. Um, contemporary design for alteration to a property shall not be discouraged when such alteration does not destroy significant historical, architectural, or cultural material 
and its design is compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the property, its environment, and surrounding contributing properties, and that whenever possible, a new addition or alteration shall be accomplished so that its future removal will not impair the essential form and integrity of the structure. Uh, staff recommends approval as submitted. Is our applicant here? Good question. All right, who are you? Amy Lauerhaus with Lauerhaus Architecture. All right, there you are. Uh, raise your hand. Do you swear from the testimony you will give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you have anything to add? No, that was a good summary. Discussion. Looks to me like they did what we suggested. Anybody have any different opinions? I think it looks better than the way it looks now. Ditto. Any any other discussion? Nope. Ready for a motion? Yeah. Are we? Yes. Have we a motion to approve as submitted from someone? Move. Motion is submitted. Uh, I guess that's hissing because he was louder. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> second Conyers. Second Conyers. Further discussion. All right. Uh, Moriarty. Yes. Kodimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Deckers, yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Next, please. All right. Next, 73 Hunter. This is to add a three and a half foot high fence to be 12.5 feet long between the house and the existing fence. The fence would start just behind the existing door per the submitted site plans. Um, staff will note that shadow box fences are generally not considered appropriate um, and that at the business meeting, the commissioners suggested possibly adding mesh. Standards here uh, are the standards for site improvements, uh, which is that landscaping, parking, utility, service areas, walkways should be compatible to each other and to the subject building or structure, as well as adjacent contributing properties, open spaces in the overall environment, um, and then be type of encourage. Staff recommends approving the application as submitted with the clarification that the new fencing should either match the existing fencing or should be consistent with the guidelines and previously approved Victorian village fences, which are horizontal or vertical wood board. Do we have an applicant? Yes. Who is that? Uh, Derek Abbott. Derek Abbott, raise your hand, please. Swear from the testimony you will give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Very good. Do you have anything to add to what staff has presented? Um, no, actually, that is perfect. We will um, amend it to get rid of the shadow box and um, replicate the version that our side fencing is right now. Do you, are you, what's the height of the interior fencing? The new the, fencing? I think it was three and a half. Got it. Discussion. Any? Um. I still think it's weird that still proposing the fence within the fence, right? Am I right? Yes. The The reasoning behind that is that um, our current door faces out into that um, where the slate slabs are. Um, yeah. Ideally, when we're currently letting our dog out, our front wrought iron fence straight to the sidewalk is older. It's going to need to be replaced at some point. So he's been able to get under that multiple times. And yeah. we would prefer that he not be able to get all the way to pretty much the sidewalk portion. So this fence goes in front of your door though, right? No, it would go behind the front door. So where in the photos okay. where the grass where the grass begins. Is there a way that you could like plant shrubs in front of it or something? Because I still think it's weird to have a fence behind a fence. Well, I don't think that the shrubs would keep him away from getting to all the way to the sidewalk. Portion. No, no, no. Like put in this fence, but you know, one foot in front of it. Oh, okay. In front of the fence. So when you look um, at the sidewalk, it's it's okay. So you see the shrubs and then the fence. 
and so you're not really seeing the fence. Yeah, I think that's certainly. Kind of weird. And we would probably, I mean, I certainly understand that. Um, I don't know if there's room for it or not, but I just think when you look beyond a wrought iron fence and see a same plane, a wooden fence is weird. I mean, I didn't know. We're also open to the idea of making it a wrought iron one as opposed to a wooden one as well. Um, I didn't know if that would make any kind of difference from an approval standpoint. I don't know. Well, it's a lot more expensive, but it would look a lot better. I've just <laughs> I haven't mean, gotten I, like I, estimates or anything on that yet, but I just I didn't think, know. I just think uh, the fortress of a double layer of fence is a str strange look from the street, um, and it doesn't look it doesn't look right. Um, and so if there was a way that you could just not have the fence so noticeable or like if you did now I'm designing it, but like if you did uh, the fence that's functional with you had like sort of a cute gate and you did shrubs in front of the fence and then if the fence was paint gate was painted green, so it's just sort of like a green garden. Thing. Yeah, so it kind of, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're definitely open to that. Absolutely. I would be okay with that if it was more of like a garden gate. Yeah, we could definitely do that. I mean, that's all. Lisa, okay you want to, Lisa, you want to make a motion? Um, so basically there's just to clarify, they're submitting an application and they're open to what the materiality is. Yeah, if we want to go in and change what the, like the material we have in there, I think is the same, but it would just be the style of how it's actually built. Um, yeah. From the shadow box into the, um, I think it's just a picket style on that side. I'm not entirely sure yeah, on what the actual it. side of it is. So I would say approve as submitted. Um, but paint or put shrubs in on the street side of the section of the sections that are four foot nine inches on either side and paint the gate um disappear. And I think as submitted, it was for shadow box. So you need to change it to yeah. the style of fence to also, I think. So the style of fence can be just a, what is it? A dog ear fence. Not shadow box. We're, lo we're looking for the right term for this uh, fence to match the uh outside fence in the in the uh it's a dog, it's a dog ear fence dog ear picket fence all right i think that's the motion do we understand what it is everybody yep do we <laughs> have a sec uh motion by codeheimer do we have a second second further discussion all in pay oh can't do that uh moriarty Yay or nay? Uh, Codeheimer. Yes. Yes. Codeheimer. Yay, yay or nay? Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker. Yes. Motion passes. There you go. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next, please. Next is item five, which is 689 North High Street. This is to install a new exterior illuminated wall sign measuring three feet six inches by two foot six inches per submitted documentation. And to install a new exterior illuminated projecting sign measured two, two foot five inch by 15 feet 10 inch with uh, lights uh, that are gooseneck lights with a blue gold color scheme. 
And so you all saw this last month as well, or rather at the business meeting, and you requested a detailed section drawing and the applicant did submit a section drawing that's in the materials. Uh, the short north design guidelines here for signage, uh, it states that the sign should be not obscure any architectural elements. The installation of a sign must be reversible and cannot permanently alter or damage historic building materials. It also states that the maximum allowable area for a wall sign that will be supported is 25 square feet um, and that pedestrian oriented signage is preferred. So Jacqueline, could you could you pull up that section? Thank you. There you go. Projected that section drawing onto the photograph there uh, to, to assist. And so staff recommends approving the application for the installation of wall and blade signs, the gooseneck lights, but with the wall sign reduced to 25 square feet. What is the uh, size of the current? I'm sorry, I, I lost my audio for a second. What's the size of the proposed uh, sign on the storefront? So the wall sign, it says, is 3.6 by 2 foot 6 inches, which is 8.75 square feet. Also, I did want to mention that um, at the meeting last month, y'all were concerned about sign competition and stated that it was an unusual to allow two signs. Right. Do we have an applicant? Yes. Mr. Holtzberry, is that you? Correct. Do you uh, raise your hand, please? You swear or affirm the testimony you will give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Very well. What have you to add? Um, so I did go out and take some new pictures of the building because the facade is finished now. Um, and basically that, that area has been set out on the wall to be that size that we have proposed here. Um, if you can see from some of the pictures, there's a wood there right now where the awning used to be. Um, so, so can we see some pictures? Yeah, so that that's on the new storefront there that you're seeing right now. And there is one, I believe, showing just the, yeah, so you see where the wood is at right now? That was where the awning was covered up and the windows were brought out. So that entire area was originally planned um, when the facade rebuild was approved to have that sign there. So right now it's just wood. So if we make the sign smaller, I'm not real sure what they're gonna do to cover that wood up that's just exposed right now. And just looking at like some of the other um, businesses nearby, I saw Max, which is uh, right down, uh, I think it's just to the right here, this photo. Um, they have a projecting sign and a wall sign. Um, so, and I believe um, the one across the street does as well, Monarch. So there's certainly some ones with a wall sign and a projecting sign. Did we okay the brick at the bottom of that? Was that brick? existing i'm not exactly sure uh that would be i don't know if if someone on the staff would know or so if that if that car would move we would see because if it was original it would have turned back in if it's new, it's going to be flush with the door and i don't remember there, i don't there ever remember being any new brick Underneath the windows, it was brick. That kind of brick? Yeah, I'm the manager there. I've been there uh, almost 15 years. That was brick completely underneath the windows. The only thing it really changed was the, uh, we extended that You need to be sworn in. Left. Yeah, you need to swear in. Right. Okay, who's there? Is that Mr. Hampton? Yes. Please raise your hand. I'll turn on. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to are, you try, are you driving while you're talking here? Do you swear for <laughs> Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. 
All right, is this brick that we're seeing in this photograph, this red brick, the same brick that was there before? Yeah, it never got touched during the change. All it right. is, it's in Google Street View. Okay. If you had a choice between a regulation uh, street facing sign and a blade sign or a large uh, storefront sign without a blade sign, which would you prefer? The wall. The one. The big uh, wall. We've spent, yeah, we spent considerable amount of money right now. We've spent 30000 on the website. We're completely rebranded. And this is, you know, we're investing a lot of money into the short north neighborhood. So we would really... Uh, it goes along with everything that we're pushing right now as far as um, basically reinvigorating our whole store. What are the rest? Anybody else have an opinion on this? Yeah, I have a couple comments. Uh, yes. My first question is uh, which drawing is showing the placement of the goose light lamps above the wall sign because page one and page two seems to be showing different locations uh, if you match the light up with the letters of the sign underneath it. So that's something to be potentially measured out. And then um, the size of the sign, I was kind of wondering if we can't just, you know, reduce the wall sign to 25 square feet, but have the background be the same navy blue. I don't really know. If, it I kind think of loses its power at that point. I mean, the sign then will look very, very small. And we have, I mean, across the street, we have neon signs. We have signs of every different type. But, you know, so we're just trying to basically improve the whole look of our store and the short north with this sign. And, um, and I'd like to comment, too, on that. Yeah. Sorry, no, who's you. that? Um, this is Oliver. So oh, okay. the Alexander's Jewelers the actual graphics lettering would probably be pretty close to 25 square feet. The the square footage we're talking about is for the entire blue um, panel, too. So if you look at just the Alexander's Jewelers graphics, it's probably pretty close to 25 square feet there. That's that right now. What's that, Aaron? Well, I, what did staff previously say it was measured at? I think they gave us the blade sign dimensions. Do we know what the dimensions of the proposed wall sign are? Approximately 38 square feet. Eight? 38. 38. And so that is for the entire blue, including the entire blue background panel. I may uh, just talk about this for a second. So what this, this is kind of a weird window storefront where there's not really like essentially like a transom window, like you see in um, Max next door. Um, it kind of makes sense to me, like if rather than being a flat panel of blue, however it is flush, that it was more of a, you know, if it had some molding to it, like, like it, you know, the bottom of, of Max, so it looked more architectural, as, or you know, responded to the the window um, moldings or something, and then the sign gets laid in there, slightly smaller than it is. Shown. And then, so then it's really an architecturally sort of molded designed paneling. And then, no matter who comes in, say Alexander's jeweler moves, that it's a building that looks good. And then that the lettering can be the sign, the size of the sign, the 25 square feet. Yep, I agree with that. So okay. let's just say the letters are. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? You 
cut out for me a little bit there. So rather than having a flat, flat panel that's that blue, mm -hmm. say ignore the sign, forget about the sign for a second, and make that panel, give it some architectural molding that responds to the, the window mullions and makes it look less of a sign and more of architecture that's part of the building. Then after you get the, you know, the transom level of the building figured out and designed, then you lay on a sign that you lay on 25 square feet of lettering over that. So it's not just a flat panel. Because if you look at like the base of Max, there's some articulation to those panels. And I feel like it needs something, whether it looks like blanked out windows or something at the top level of your windows. Are you suggesting a frame around this thing, kind of like in the same yes. dimension as the window mullions? Yes. Uh, and so it looks like there's an additional mullion separating the sign from the windows yeah. and yeah. from the brick. And yeah. then we'll call the sign the lettering that's in the middle yes. of this. Yes. And the lettering is not to be larger than 25 square feet. Yes. And I can confirm with my designer who I just talked to that lettering on the wall sign is only 18 square feet. It's for just the lettering. Yeah, I think if you look at, at least on Street View, the storefront to the left, the south, the blue molding, I think that is kind of what we're talking about, of having a little bit more molding at the top and the bottom, and then allowing the signage to act as those transom windows. Yeah, I just don't know how we would accomplish that. Like, how we would, I don't know what we would do to make it look like windows up there or... No, and it's never been windows, so I don't understand that. I don't think she's the t the terminology is is you're basically trying to make it look like this panel. So I have a, a, a railing, and it can be spindles, or it can be a panel with a finished piece, which is framing that solid piece. But the simplest yeah, way to do it is I the simplest way to do it as I understand it is just to put a frame around the sign. So instead of a flat object, it's a it's got a frame around it, and the dimensions of the frame are approximately the same as the window mullions. Is Correct. I think that's what we're talking about. But I don't understand why that can't be done. Is there something I'm missing? I, I'm just, I guess I'm just not understanding the frame you guys are either. talking about. Like, do you, are you trying to make it look like the window moyens are extending up into that area or? Well, no, I think we're trying to make it look finished off. That's exactly it, Jack. So the mill, the mullion stop at the bottom of the sign, but there's a finish piece all around the edge of that sign to make it look like a finished piece sitting on top of that window. Okay, so I mean, I could yeah, we can just put some framework around it. I don't see. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that would be a big deal for us. All right, around the 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 edges of it on the right, left, and top of it, if that's what you're talking about. And bottom. And bottom, okay. And staff can work with you to, to create that as well, to help with some guidance if you need it. it just sounds yep. like a rectangle around the sign is what y'all are looking for. Yeah, and I, so, I don't know if you would want to make it black or if you'd want us to make it like the metallic color we're doing with the letters or. Metallic's probably wrong. I think black would look all right. What do you think, fellow? I think to, I think tone on tone. Why would you make be the a same navy as... with a black when black's not associated with any marketing for the company? No, I. 
if you I was just about to say, I think it should be tonal, meaning tone on tone. You see the relief. I of agree the with game, that. But it's all the same color. Yeah. All right. Do okay. we, have we figured this out? Are we ready for a motion? Um, is this something significant enough to be able to see again? Or, or are you thinking that this is? I would think that if we do this, we can either let a subcommittee or staff figure out the details, but I think having a, a we're pretty specific about the dimensions of the frame, the color, uh, which signs are which. I think there's some ambiguity about where the lights are, but there needs to be because the lights need to be mounted in mortar. Okay. Right? Uh, as long as they're evenly spaced, I don't know that it makes a difference, does it? <laughs> so, motion time, somebody. We only, we're talking about a motion just for a wall sign then, we're not considering the blade sign at all. Is that, I thought we were going to allow the projecting sign as well. Uh, my initial intention was uh, not to, but I'm just one commissioner. If we look at this sign as really only being 18 or 25 square feet, what do the rest of the commissioners think about a blade sign? Well, I think when you started the discussion, Jack, you asked, do you want a wall sign or a blade sign? And they said, we want a wall sign. Yeah, but I don't know why he asked that, to be frank. Like, they're asking for both. And right. if, so, if yeah, I don't want to make sure I didn't hijack sure. this. So I did want to make sure I didn't hijack this. So what is the sense of the commissioners about allowing both signs? So are we going to let every every applicant do that? I mean, we're setting a precedent here. It's not an awning. Could I just say, if you refer to the short north guidelines, each, uh, I can't, I'm not reading it, but each uh, tenant is allowed one wall sign and either one uh, projecting sign or canopy sign. So it's in the guidelines. For allowed it's to permissible sign. under the guidelines. Yes. Well, there we are. <laughs> total sign of square foot can't exceed 25 square feet, correct, Connie? For the wall sign and 12 for the projecting. Okay, yeah. thank you. And our projecting is under 12, and we're planning on making the lettering there 25 square feet, and we don't have a canopy. Yeah, the lettering certainly shouldn't be any bigger than in the drawing to get up to 25 square feet if it's 18 there. Yeah. All right, do we have a motion? We can make it A and B, so we can vote separately on both signs, and A would be the wall sign. All right, I'll go ahead and make a motion. For item A, um, from item A, which is the wall sign, uh, approved uh, as submitted, given the following changes. That clarification or reduction in the overall size to meet the 25 square foot uh, restriction uh, is achieved. Um, a revision to the sign to uh, accomplish uh, a, a more integrated approach uh, utilizing um, molding or some kind of architectural feature uh, to better integrate it into the elevation. Um, and then the goosenecks would be um, evenly spaced and all installation um, to be uh, within the mortar. Did I miss anything? Point of clarification. When you say it's supposed oh. to be 25 square feet, are you saying the lettering or are you saying we have to take the whole thing down from what's proposed? It seems like 
it, it seems like the entire sign itself, the sign portion of it would be the 25 square foot, given being very prescriptive, but the architectural elements of that could be the same material tone on tone, but those are more building facade elements versus sign elements. Does anyone understand what we're, yes. I, I'm not sure what that so I So what he's saying, is. what he's saying is, Basically, the background of this sign would become an architectural element, and then the sign itself would just be the lettering, which is 18 square feet right now. Cool. Okay. With that clarification, do we have a second? A second. Second. And then Any further one, discussion? one item, guys. Yes, yeah. one item is that this is going to be reviewed by uh, a subcommittee. I think that I would want that review by subcommittee, just only because of the ambiguity of what's been talked about. And who volunteers for the subcommittee? I would. That's Hissom uh -huh. and Moriarty. So yeah. the motion's amended for Hissom and Moriarty to be on the subcommittee to review the revisions. Uh, Do we have a second? Second. All right. Further discussion. Okay. Uh, in favor or against? Moriarty. Yes. That's yes. Yes. Kotheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker. Yes. Motion passes. Part B. I guess would be the blade sign as. Uh, proposed, right? Need a motion. Just real quick, the um, fastenings for the blade shine should be installed into the mortar and not the brick. Good. I was going to say that, yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, um, to approve that submitted? No. With. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your your audio is breaking up. I think you're trying to say approve is submitted with the addendum that the sign is to be anchored in the mortar, not the brick. Is that sure. what you said? Yeah. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Further discussion. Uh, uh, Hissom was first to second it. Further discussion. All in favor? Oh, no. Uh, Moriarty. Yes. K Kodimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker, yes. All right. There you go. So you need to uh, submit revised drawings for how that uh, exactly what you're going to do with your uh, wall sign, and then they will be sent to the subcommittee, and you will get a final answer. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. What's next? Next is item six at 936 Highland Street. This is to replace textured aluminum siding for a single unit with new James Hardy fiber cement siding and trim. Offit fascia gutters and downspouts would be replaced. New siding would be evening blue with Arctic white trim. Um, at the business meeting, commissioners provided the feedback that they needed clarification regarding how the trim will be added to the windows above the garage and ex requested exposure specs of both the existing and proposed new, new siding. Um, that feedback was provided to the applicant. The Victorian Village guidelines state that new material should duplicate the size, shape, and texture of the original material as closely as possible and that siding spots wider than four inches with rare exceptions are, are not appropriate. Um, and the applicable code is 3116.11, standards for alteration, exterior cladding of a structure shall be consistent with the original materials used on the property. So staff recommends approval uh, as submitted with the following clarification, that the new siding should have the same exposure specs as the existing siding, should match the, um, and should be smooth and have no faux wood grain. All right, do we have an applicant present? Yes. 
All right, where are you? There you are. Uh, state your name, please. Uh, Dan Gessler. You swear from the testimony you'll give tonight the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. Very well. Do you have what have you to add? Uh, I think that summed it up pretty well. Uh, originally, the homeowner did want to do a larger profile, um, but I did advise him that the uh, it's a current four inch profile, so we can easily match that and do it smooth. So uh, we can make those accommodations. Discussion. No discussion. Jack, I just was curious about um, the window detail. I think that we had asked about did, uh, yes. did that getting did that get flushed out or or vetted by any chance, or did I miss That's it? That's kind of the main thing. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, the windows are being replaced at the same time. Uh, so it will be trimmed with James Hardy trim around the window. The, um, the big window that's in the front that kind of projects out from the building will be done pretty much like, like it is now, um, just with um, James Hardy panels and trim. So the look will really not change on that box window there on that big projection. <laughs> The windows above the garage will be trimmed with hardy trim just around picture framed. I think okay. a detail of that though, because it's going, it's going to look different from the other units. What? Okay. I'm I'm looking at the picture, the first la bottom picture, before we get to the uh, specs for the lap siding, and it looks like some of these windows are boxed out that that are uh, surrounded by siding. The windows on the right unit right are have been replaced as well. I looked, I mean, I, we didn't do them, but, um, and they have been replaced as well and do have kind of a trim piece that would look very similar to what the hardy side would be. If we have no more I mean, do we want to take the window uh, trim issue to staff or a subcommittee? Yes. I'm okay with staff. So I just just wanted to ask that question since that was a kind of a detailed question that we talked about before. So um, any other? I think the whole idea, the whole idea is, is trying to match in kind, just to try to maintain some sense of uniformity or consistency amongst the units. I would agree. Any other discussion? So what can I just ask a clarification point? What what exactly does that mean? That means that you would submit draw, a drawing showing your window, uh, how you plan to trim out the windows. It would be submitted to staff. They would look at it and work through the process of coming through uh, designing something appropriate. And and what would be the what would be the appropriate trim for that? What am I looking to use as a a, a model for that? the other windows that have been trimmed out in that built in that whole building? So that left hand side of that building, do you see those windows are trimmed? So the windows that are on the unit to the right, like there's the a unit that's sided, then there's the brick unit, then there's another sided unit. Yep, the one to the south. Yes, yes, thank you. So the one to the south, so you want the one that he's doing to be dictated by that, even though those windows were replaced. I don't know what the trim is on those windows, but you want it to look similar to that. Yes. Okay. The materiality would still be the hardy. We were, I don't think we're trying to change the materiality that you're proposing. It's only right. just the dimension in terms of, you know, reference of the aesthetic. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, sir. I just 
I knew what I needed. I'm going to go more of that and see what that trend is and, and let staff know. Excellent. Do we have a motion? It's okay. Did they give the architectural discount, the contractor discount? Hello. Commissioner. Motion to, I'll, I'll make a motion. Thank you. John. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion uh, to approve as submitted uh, with uh, the following. <laughs> Somebody needs to mute themselves. Um, the party trim window detail will be um, clarified and submitted to staff uh, for a final review and approval. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Second by, was that Moriarty? Moriarty. All right. Uh, further discussion? Moriarty? Yes. Kodimer? Wow. Yes. Is Lisa Lair? Is that yes? Yes. There it is. It's a yes. Conyers. I, I, I did the lip reading. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker. Yes. We are, a, we are a, a choir of unanimity today. Motion passes. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So we need to choke up on um, any of this text because I'm on my Surface Pro. So if you need motions, count me out. So the rest of you are going to have to choke up on that. <laughs> Got it. All right, I won't blame you for the lack of, for the silence when when we uh, ask for a motion. What's next? Thank you. What's next? Item seven. This is nine fifty three Denison Avenue. Uh, two things are happening here. Proposed versus clear town. The existing single story, single car garage, and replace it with a story and a half, two car garage per submitted drawings. And then also they're proposing a two story addition on the south elevation of the house, measuring 16 foot six inches by 37 feet per submitted drawings. Um, we saw this first at the special meeting on June 29th. Uh, at which point you guys had some comments saying that it wasn't clear from the photographs that deterioration was too far gone to rehabilitate the property um, and that the cost narrative was mainly cosmetic and should be adjusted. Uh, additionally, let's see. Oh, then there's some stuff for the addition. If we do you want to do this in two parts or should I read all of the stuff at once? Let's do this in two parts. And I think we're we've got enough information in front of us. Yeah, and about I the replacement add... about the replacement garage to look at the demolition first. Okay, great. And I would add that uh, commissioners Conyers and Kothheimer were able to visit yesterday, um, and so uh, they may have some additional comments. Um, staff would recommend um, retaining and repairing the garage for this portion of it. Um, and there were some questions about whether or not this resource was contributing. Staff does recommend that this is a contributing structure based on the National Park Service guidelines for evaluating resources. Um, and those guidelines were shared with the commissioners. Um, where's the, is our applicant here? We're here. Uh, where are you? Where are you? There you are. Do you are you both going to offer testimony? Do you both swear? Uh, state your names, please. Jim Cook. Jessica Sprankle. Do you both swear or affirm the testimony you'll give tonight? Truth, old truth, and nothing. Yes. Yes. All right. We want to next hear from our demo inspection team of uh, Liesel and or Sean, whoever wants to go next. I can go. Um, so we went to visit this yesterday. Um, uh, some of, like this photo, I don't know if these are photos from yesterday. I think they're from another day, but basically the, the structure seemed honestly pretty well cared for. There are some areas that have replaced siding um, there is some 
rotting, which is shown in this picture, that's on the north elevation. There's a gutter missing on the north elevation, so that might be uh, the reason for the rotting. Um, there is a couple places where the sill plate um, is deteriorating a little bit, but not something that couldn't easily be repaired. Um, there's a tree within proximity on the east side of the building and it's starting to grow into the structure, um, but not, it has, it's maybe raised the ground level a bit, but nothing that's like caused any damage that's noticeable. Um, that's one of the locations is a little bit of rotting. Um, it, it's freshly painted. Um, uh, there was a couple comments from the owner that, you know, it gets broken in two, which <laughs> any garage and um, generally like the ground plane is level, although water might run from the trees, raise a little bit through the um, garage. It generally has a nice concrete pad that doesn't look like it needs to be replaced. And um, uh, what was I going to say? Functions pretty well as a garage. In, in, in. Uh, Commissioner Conyers. Yes, sir. What, uh, what have you to add to this? Yes, sir. Uh, Lisa's observations are, are uh, I would concur with. I think that majority of what I was trying to do was trying to understand the, uh, you know, what was what would the replacement, uh, I shouldn't say replacement, but what would the repairs uh, that are needed and what that would do to the overall structure itself. And the, the, there are some items that are in need of repair, um, but the repair items are not significant uh, enough that would start to challenge the integrity of the existing building. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to utilize um, the staff's understanding of being a contributing building, um, knowing that I think I looked at roughly about $20,000 worth of uh, items that are in need of repair based upon the estimates that would, um, you know, remedy some of the items that we that we saw. So could you be a little more that's in the packet. Could you be a little more yes, specific sir. about what you think needs to be repaired here i mean we've got a lot of buildings with a little bit of rot in them right. <laughs> including some residences no. yes sir so if you were to uh um you know maybe maybe sarah would you advance to there's a kind of a, i think a cost narrative that was kind of part of the packet if i remember correctly right um so i'm looking at the, that it's right after the report from schaefer uh one more right there so just kind of going down through there, uh, replace existing concrete drive. I, I guess, you know, there are some items around the surrounding area that, but I, I guess we're, we're focusing really right now on the structure itself. So that item, uh, I can't, I can't really include in the, in the evaluation, uh, from okay. that standpoint. uh, repairs to masonry foundation. Um, that's understood. Um, uh, I think to Liesl's point, um, there's the tree, uh, that is to the east. Um, that the tree itself has grown and matured, so it has varied the ground plane or elevation to be higher than the foundation uh, block itself. And so the, that's where you can see in that photograph that has the strongest amount of uh, seal plate rot uh, for roughly about maybe three or four feet uh, on that elevation. Um, so you've got so a combination of heaved up uh, foundation and sill plate there that's correct. along with rot and water invasion. That's correct. Um, the framing repairs, there's a note here about framing repairs. We would agree in terms of, you know, the seal uh, and that seal plate and some of the vertical stud replacement that are rotted based upon, um, you know, some of the water infiltration that has been uh, discussed. Um, so that would be applicable. But wouldn't that uh, just consider, items. wait, 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 before you, I yes, just sir. want to be clear. Would that yes, just consist of sawzawing off 
uh, the bottom of the uh, several of these studs, like three of them, and then uh, part of the sill plate and putting something else in, or is is that more uh, extensive surgery than that? No, it's 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 not. But at the same time, you're going to have vertical studs that are going to go from the new sill plate. Those are going to be probably king studs that are going to go up to, you know, probably a ledger or a top plate, double top plate. I don't. I'm a lot of times what you'll see is, um, you know, kind of a quick fix where you may have one foot six inches of overlap between the lower studs that you're replacing, and the main, you know, vertical stud. And I think that's where, you know, that, that kind of toenail approach is is something that is not a good fix, which we see a lot. So, um, so I think what a gentleman is, is kind of referring to in terms of the estimate would probably be more vertical studs that would be in the interior to basically overcompensate or to compensate from the studs that are currently uh, rotted. So you'd run your new studs all the way up to the top plate? Yes, sir. You could. Yes, sir. All right. Um, the replacement well, I interrupted. Gutter, um, no, it's no problem. <laughs> replace roof gutter and downspouts those items I, I can't include because those kind of items are more general maintenance you know related items um siding repairs uh, i can understand that just given the understanding of the infiltration so i did include that one uh door repairs uh i i understand and i did include those um and then the scrape power wash and repaint i put that back under general maintenance so uh, i think all in all when i that summary was roughly about plus or minus twenty thousand Got it. Yes, sir. All right. From the applicants, what do you to add to all this? Um, $20,000 is quite a bit of money to spend on that shed. I, I could rebuild a whole new shed for that price. Can I, can I stop outline a little bit more clearly what the determining factors are for uh, the structure deemed? to be uh, contributing? The code says. Yeah, are you referencing the National Park Service guidelines? No, I'm going first to city code 3116.017. Property means the structure, blah, 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 subject to part of the code, which this is. The contributing property is at least 40 years of age or contributes the architectural character or historical and architectural significance of a group or district. Uh, this war is interesting because this is 40 years old, so it's contributing. Uh, but if you go down to standards for demolition, it is kind of vague on whether a property, whether property is contributing or not is the determining factor. It says, uh, if seeking to demolish an entire structure, blah, 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 we balance the historic architectural and cultural value of the structure and the purposes of this chapter against various factors. So, I think it's somewhat vague, and but I think we are all looking at the same thing, which is what is the architectural, historic significance or value of this structure? Uh, no matter how you slice it, that's what the Park Service guidelines are trying to get at. And I think that's what the code is trying to get at. Mm -hmm. This is, in my opinion, kind of on the edge. It is a very humble structure. On the other hand, we have lots of them throughout the neighborhood. We have a number of small, humble garages around, and I would be very loath to say none of them have any particular value that prevents their demolition. But that's my speech. Uh, uh, the other commissioners may disagree with me. Tommy, were you trying to raise your hand? 
Yeah, I just wanted to say kind of what, oh, actually, I never was sworn in, so uh, Jack, you want to swear? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but? I do. Thank you, Connie. Uh, so I think that you do need to maybe first the commission, maybe get a straw poll vote. Is this a contributing structure? If yes, if no, then there's no problem with demolishing it. If yes, then you then you still can look at uh, the code that you were uh, referring to, which you didn't read uh, completely, 311614, where it says, right. the commission shall be guided in its decision thereupon by balancing the historic architectural and cultural value of the structure or architectural feature, and then going back, kind of skipping to the bottom there, um, or and the merit of the replacement project. So, and and also uh, substantial economic hardship. So you can still weigh that. So is it contributing? Yes or no? And then and then consider that. That's my suggestion. Uh, well, remember the definition of a contributing property is it is at least 40 years of age or contributes to the architectural character or, or historic and architectural significance of a group or district. So if we find this is older than 40 years, it's contributing. That's what this says. Well, that's I, the, the commission hasn't the commission hasn't said that as a whole yet. So, well, uh, that's my question: Is there any serious question whether this is older than forty years? Well, here's what I think: I think that we haven't looked at the design and the merit of the design that they're trying to replace it with, so we can decide: Is the design better? Does it add value architecturally? Does it have some reference to the older structure? Or is it basically, I want a new big garage and I'm tearing the old garage down? We have a new design. Let's talk about that. Applicants, what have you to say about your new garage? I think we've got pictures here. Okay. So can you hear me okay? Yes. So the new garage is uh, the same height as the existing house. It is not meant to be uh, overwhelming to the property. It has a, a, a really three quarter story above it that's gonna be used as a photography studio um, with a new carriage house style garage door that um, would replicate the original doors of the structure that was original to the structure or to the property before it was demolished, before the garage in question was built. So what's this? So so I'm seeing two, adding two buildings to this property. So so the other building that you're seeing is the second part of this application, which is an addition to the house. Right. We've divided this into A and B, and we're taking on the at the uh, demo first. Correct. But I think it is. I agree with Commissioner Hitham. It's appropriate to look at. The garage, at least uh, generally speaking, what the proposal is so before we go is, further. Is the width of that garage same as the width of the house? It is uh, slightly wider. It's not the same width as the house. Schematically, I could see where I buildings and it pulls apart one becomes a garage one becomes the house but when the garage gets bigger like on steroids it doesn't work within that schematic so so if the question is about reducing the width of the garage 18 inches can that be coupled along with the broader conversation of whether or not it's appropriate yes okay I would point out that uh, garage is going to be pretty much blocked if the addition goes in. Uh, you won't be able to see much of it from the street anyway. Although from the alley, it's a different story. From the alley, it's a different story. So it should look the same both ways. Yeah. And so, so I think in this scheme, I'm I kind of like this scheme, um, but I think that. The garage facade 
needs to look more like the front of your house, which is fairly plain, doesn't have a fancy door or anything like that. Um, so it reads back to Does that make sense? Yes, yes, that, yes. Yes, I think the, the design of the garage door is, you know, we're willing to go back and forth on that to, to find something that is deemed appropriate. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the, you know, the broader scheme as well, so. So that's my opinion. I don't know what the other commissioners think, but I like the scheme of the block sliding back and forth on the lot. They're the same in proportion and height. One happens to be a garage, one happens to be the main house, and the new one happens to be the addition connector piece. <laughs> Squirrels, let's let's go. Well, for more discussion. Um I can so in regards to the addition, if we're considering this, we're considering the addition separately from the garage. I think generally the addition is okay, except for the fact that it is taller than. The yeah, I think we need to stick with the garage issue right now, and the and demolition number one before we get too far afield and we will get back to the uh addition okay in regards to the garage i think that it functions quite well as a garage and that it's an issue of modern convenience suburban convenience to want it to be something more than that so they bought a garage and that's what they have. And that, that particular garage doesn't seem to be what they wanted, but that's the garage that they bought. So that's my, it's my nice garage, garage got flooded last night because I have a tree growing into it. The whole that's thing got flooded yesterday and it's so, just gonna continue to get worse. I, I think there's certain there's certain sacrifices of living in a historic neighborhood. I would argue that m many historic homes in in this country get water in the basements when it rains, and that's something that is pretty common in living in a historic home. Um, so I don't really think of it as some some sort of extreme problem something to be expected of a historic home. Yep, I think my opinion on the garage issue is that we've established that it has historical significance and that the special committee didn't see um, the cost associated with it that couldn't be fixed. So it seems that it, it um, is smaller than the owner wishes it was, but that doesn't mean it warranted a demolition. I I just, my issue with this is, again, what does it take to knock down a building? Is it that it is inadequate to the uh, owner's current needs? Or is it that it he proposes he or she or it proposes to replace it with something larger and grander uh i would suggest that neither of those is a good reason for a demolition uh and that we need something substantially more than that because otherwise this is a decision that could correct me if i'm wrong replicate itself throughout the neighborhood for uh, buildings that are not prohibitively expensive to fix. That's my speech. Further discussion?
Hearing none, are we there? Or look like everybody froze for a second. All right, are we ready for a motion and a vote on the demolition? Anything further from the applicants? I I agree, and I, I appreciate the conversation of what is determined to be prohibitively uh, burdensome in terms of cost. But again, I think like uh, we discussed with the commissioners when they were on site, I, I hope to communicate the point that, you know, there may be only other or maybe only three other houses in this neighborhood that are less than 20 feet tall. And again, we're not looking to build something that is overwhelming to the property. So I, I just want those things to be considered. Thank you. Uh, I don't think any of us has serious issues except for 18 inches and ornamentation with the proposed uh, replacement garage. If we do, I missed it. All right, are we ready for a vote? Moriarty, yes or no? Aaron? Did we have a motion? Oh, did we? I think I maybe I forgot. Uh, shall we have a motion to approve as submitted? The demolition. Approve as submitted. Uh, motion hiss him. Do we have a second? Second. Second Conyers. All right. Further discussion. Moriarty. No. Kodheimer. No. Conyers. No. Hissom. Yes. Decker, no. Motion fails. Do you want to go ahead and discuss part A, which is the addition? Yes. Uh, has staff presented on the addition yet? Or do you want to just kick it over to the uh, applicant? I can add a few quick staff comments. Um, sure. Just that staff would recommend that the plans for the addition would be altered to be lower than the existing or the house and have a smaller footprint uh, because the shotgun is a very distinctive style and the proposed addition would significantly alter the floor plan. Uh, otherwise, just to remind you guys of the comments from the special meeting, which were that the addition should be lower or at least no taller than the original structure, and that the siding should not be plastic, have fake wood grain, or be textured. That's it. All right. Applicant, what say you? So the addition to the house uh, is meant to replicate or duplicate the, shot, the, the existing shotgun style. Um, there is an existing tree that is on the front of the property. Um, and I know that it is currently shown as taller. If it's a recommendation um, by the commission moving forward, we can make it equivalent in height. Um, but I think right now it's only a, a foot and a half taller than the existing structure, if I remember correctly. Um, the offset and with the, the combination of the offset back from uh, the face of the existing house and the tree are meant to make that addition uh, appear to be the same size. Um, the the only reason that it's taller is to have functional headspace in the bathroom and the bedroom that are located on the upper floor of that addition. Um, we ran through iterations of this with dormers, as was also suggested in the special meeting, and the dormers popping out the sides of it made, made it appear much more massive um, than a foot and a half increase on the single gable. Discussion. So I, I think what's interesting about this is understand the, your, your need to have them look the same. And I think because of how it's staggered back and on the lot, I think the perception will be that they sort of are the same height. I don't think they're going to read that different. which is our intention yep i was kind of having the same opinion jeff that um since it's set so far back that probably that foot and a half wouldn't um, be as right. noticeable if it was a foot pulled back i would say 
but there's enough distance and that lot drops enough that I don't think you're going to read that difference at all. I agree with that. The only thing is that I kind of, I don't, obviously it's, you can't see from the elevations, the detail of how the addition meets the existing house. But if there was some way to make it not overwhelm it uh, in the attachment, that would probably just be better. I have, I, 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 have a que I have a question for my uh, fellow commissioners, which is currently the addition shows imitating the window trim style of the main house. Shouldn't this be simpler? No, I don't think so. It's already simple. It can't really get simpler. Well, it's got these little crowns over it and stuff. Or yeah. pan, uh, eight panes and all that stuff. And I also think, to your comment, Liesl, I think because the little cottage is in the front, it sets the precedent for the rest of the facade. So anything that's behind that sort of falls in line. I, I don't think it kind of, I don't think that connection overwhelms it. I'm more thinking of like our own due diligence to to so this house doesn't in any way appear to be over or the addition in any way doesn't appear to be overwhelming them got it just one item just to consider is you know right now obviously there's a pairing of windows and those pairing of windows in terms of penetration is a little stronger than the cottage so what could happen is uh, that would be on, you know, the the east and the west facade that those go back to being singles. So, for instance, there could be two singles, two single windows on the lower level, and then a single window on the second floor of the east facade, and then uh, you could replicate or or kind of go to two windows if you needed to on the the west facade. But I think the pairing of two windows side by side, I think that's where the dominance is, is kind of being maybe subconsciously viewed just based upon the amount of glazing in, in that area. I agree with that. And that was one of the reasons for my comment about the window trim was making them simpler would make the, uh, might make the, uh, addition seem less massive. I did walk by this structure and the tree, there is a tree in the front yard that makes it difficult to see from the street what the height of the addition is going to be. But that obscure, uh, that will only obscure that as long as the tree lives. That's another point. I I think it I think this respects the originality and the architecture of the original cottage, and I think it's you know respecting it uh, and saying it is different, it is new. I'm I'm fine with it. I don't think they it needs to be a one for one match. Is this in shape to give a final approval or should we treat this as a conceptual and do we need more detail and drawings? I think we need more drawings. Um, I agree with Sean's comments about the windows. And so I'd like to see the, the windows um, addressed. And again, I still think the, the sort of joinery of it at a tail level, I, d I don't know if there's a way to have it um, have a less noticeable height difference. Um, I had a question about the materials. Is the applicant planning to reside the existing front structure? No. No, okay. So 
your application has a blue hardy siding circle, but the elevation is showing like a white. And then you have a difference in windows also where the addition has black frame windows and your original structure is white frame. Is that of concern to the question at all? So the colors, uh, is, is this a question for the applicant? Well, I guess if, if your elevation is what you're planning on constructing or if it's the materials that you've circled is the question. So the the values for the colors were included with the garage elevations. They're not uh, as submitted in the product brochures that um, are by James Hardy. It's the colors that are in the renderings. They're Sherwin-Williams paint colors. The windows are meant to be black um, with black trim um, to uh, contradict the existing house or, or offset it a little bit to show that it's a part of the new structure. And then the um, the paint for the siding is a vertical, it's a vertical board and batten that is like a, a cream color. So I think we need to go back. So I think we need to go back to what Jack was saying. Is this a conceptual? Because this is the first time we've seen this. And do we need more information, commissioners? Or are we ready to vote on this thing? This I, think, is, I think at the very least we have given the applicant some pretty clear guidance that the dimensions of the of addition are okay. Its orientation is okay. Uh, three commissioners, myself, uh, Conyers, and Kodimer, want to see the fenestration on the east end changed. Uh, I think that, got, you know, if we do treat this as conceptual, we've given some pretty clear guidance they can go back with and come up with final drawings. I would agree. Last month was the conceptual review, and we, we changed this for all the conversation last month. And if it's a matter of just changing a couple of windows, we can have that done very quickly and st staff could review that. What do you think? Is this a sufficient set of drawings to issue a certificate on? Or do we need more staff? Anybody? Well, in comparison to I'm no, I'm no architect, to, but this looks pretty thin to me. No, in comparison to previous projects, I mean, obviously, in terms of uh, gaining approvals on projects, this is light in comparison. Uh, so uh, if we turn that over to staff, would staff be able to, you know, evaluate all of those items with those additions, you know, against this? That just doesn't seem like it's that's fair to do to them. Do you have a clear understanding of the overhangs and gutters and things like that? There's a cut on there. 12 inch overhang and that sort of thing. Correct. Yeah. There's I that's, cuts. That's, that's, I think that's what we're, okay. Connie, I think that's what we're looking at. Is it would probably be nice to have, you know, a section cut through it, being able to have those kind of things and some kind of dimensions so that way when you were able to review it, you had an opportunity to just confirm whatever was in for the permit drawings was consistent or somewhat consistent to what we are, you know, reviewing today. That's all. I think staff is okay with that if the commission is okay with that. What are we supposed to be okay with? Uh, staff review or, or continuing? Connie, I don't do you recommend enough information? I, I agree, uh, but I'm not an architect. Anybody else? I think there needs to be more information. That's three of us. Yes, agreed. I think we need to give this one more go round, although you're very, very close to an approvable project, but we, uh, you can work with staff to 
come up with drawings that are sufficiently detailed and call out enough of these issues that uh, we can approve it. All right. So next time before the commission with those drawings, it will not be uh, conceptual. It will be for approval. It would be the next would be hopefully if the drawings are okay, then we can approve it. Okay. So do we have a motion to continue? Part B. Motion to continue. Uh, part B. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, Moriarty. Yes. Kotheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker, yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you very much. Sorry this isn't so e as easy as it looks. All right, what's next? Next is item eight. 1051 North High Street. This is to install a permanent digitally printed vinyl wall sign measuring 42 inches high by 13 feet 6 inches wide per the submitted documentation and to install lettering into a vertical window panel. So the applicant addressed the commission comments from the business meeting and altered the sign layout. So this image right here is the new proposal. And the one on the page right after it was what they brought to the business meeting. They've decreased the overall sign of the size of the sign and added the text into the window rather than across the sign. Uh, the short north design guidelines say that signage should not obscure any architectural elements. And again, that the maximum allowable area for a wall sign that will be supported is 25 square feet. Uh, Yes, and so staff recommends approving the application as submitted with the following clarifications that the wall sign is no more than 25 square feet, um, that it reflects the updated drawings, and that the sign may be installed for six months, but then it should return to the commission for further review. All right, uh, do we have an applicant with us? Uh, yes. All right, I hear a voice from somewhere. Uh, who are you, please? Uh, my name's Logan. I'm a day night sign company. Very well. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very well. Uh, you've got you're on a bit of a video delay, so you tend to freeze up on us. Do you have anything to add? Um, just for the the uh, six month review, is that for the now leasing portion the on the windows, or do you mean the whole the sign up above as well? Because the sign up above would like to be permanent. The now leasing part is inside the window, right? Yes. The part above that says Valencia on high is going to be on plastic, but you intend that to be there forever. Permanent, yes. Uh, ordinarily, it's the now leasing stuff that's oversized or otherwise weird that we require uh, subject to a uh, periodic review. But any of the other commissioners can uh, pop right in here. Um, I can comment on it. So it looks like the Valencia sign that should be less than 25 square feet, which it doesn't appear to be if it's going to be permanent. Um, it also should not have a website on it that does not meet the signage guidelines for a permanent sign. So it can only have the name and the address. Um, and so that's a separate thing if that's going to be permanent. And then as far as the temporary sign, yes, that would need to come back on a periodic basis for review. But otherwise, I think the temporary signage is okay. I don't know that we have jurisdiction over the temporary sign if it's on the inside of a window, do we? It's a window yeah. cover. It's covering the window. And usually signage can't cover more than what, 25% of a window? I'm thumbing through my guidelines. I'm gonna have to trust you there. 
It's the because we've reviewed all the window decals, and I believe it's twenty or twenty five percent. Yeah, that came up when we were doing orange barrel with uh, the the uh, uh, white castle building. Yeah, remember orange theory. There okay. we go. So this would basically be supportable as a temporary promotion, but not as permanent signage. Is that what you're telling me? Yep. Yes. And so, other, what do you say? Um, yeah, that that sounds fine. Um, if you want to put the conditions, uh, 25 square feet and no website for the uh, the upper sign, and then the now leasing portion on the windows, we have to come back every six months. That's that's totally fine. Sounds reasonable. Is that what we're saying, or that he has a choice of including the website and treating the upper sign as a uh, temporary too. Uh, we do not want to treat the upper sign as temporary. We, we definitely want that one to be permanent. <clears throat> Got it. It's hard to tell uh, 1 more comment. It's hard to tell because of the angles of the building, but I'm assuming that the. The upper sign aligns with the seams in the paneling. Even though right now it looks like it's kind of sticking out to the side of the window. Yeah, that would be the intention. Try and line it up with everything. Okay, just making sure that's the intent. Um, I can make a motion. Please. Okay. Um, make a motion that the upper sign uh, is a permanent sign and. Um, Shall be resized to be under 25 square feet and not include a web address, just the name of the building. And that the window sign um, is a temporary sign. That web address may may move down there and must be brought back for review in six months. Have we a second? Second. For the discussion. Applicant, will that do it for you? Yeah, sounds good. Moriarty. Yes. Kotheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Kissam. Decker, yes. Motion passes. There you go. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next, please. Can I, can I just say something, Jack? Yes. Um, in regards to time, I have a hard stop at six, so we're getting, we're getting there. I know I'm trying to move it along as fast as I can. And I, I would have to jump off slightly before 630. Uh, we have, where are we? Uh, we're, uh, having trouble. Let's go to, uh, West 2nd Avenue. Sure. This is item number 9, 134 to 138 West 2nd. Um, this is an application to landscape the front yard per the submitted drawings, adding flower beds, bushes, and perennials in the front and backyards and planting grass and removing existing bushes and a pine tree that is 30 feet tall, plus then planting a tree to replace the removed pine tree. Um, the applicant was informed that they need an arborist report. Uh, we haven't received that yet, but I've heard from the applicant that they found an arborist who then didn't show up and now they're just having trouble getting an arborist report. Uh, applicable standard here is 3116.13, standards for site improvement. So landscaping um, and similar improvements should be compatible to each other and to the subject building or structure, as well as to the adjacent contributing properties, open spaces, and environment. The staff recommends approving the application with the clarification that an arborist report should be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. All right, Lisa, any problems with this? It's any problems with getting the arborist report after the, uh, is the applicant here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, well, let's not ignore you. 
<laughs> Do you swear or affirm the testimony you will give today is the truth of the whole truth and nothing but the truth, Mr. Van Fossen? Hello? Oh, Sorry, froze you up for a second there. You're back now. Can you, you hear me? Swear, yes. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today is the truth? The whole truth and nothing but. Yes. Very well. Do you have anything to add? Um, no, the, the request is pretty simple. Um, as was mentioned, just having trouble getting an arborist report. Uh, a couple no shows now. Uh, I got another guy coming out next week, but um, hopefully I can get that in. Um, I guess my main question is like, under what circumstances would the uh, request be denied uh, pending the arborist report? Well, I think what we're intending to do is, uh, unless I'm mistaken, is to approve this and then instruct staff to give you a certificate, assuming you submit a sufficient report about the tree, right? Yep. And so what is that report supposed to say? Yep. What is it supposed to say? Staff, what are you looking for? Generally, we're looking to see the health of the tree. I know we also like to see a plan for a tree to be replanted later, um, but another staff member may have more information. Is that yeah. there? Lisa, what do you think of this? Um, hold on, I'm looking at it again for a second. Um, I think that I think the only thing I would say is that the tree that replaces it be of a reasonable size. Um, like that's a, I don't know what the caliper of that tree is, but it looks pretty large, even though the pine tree and I'm assuming you're not going to do a pine tree. So I would say that I don't, I'm not really sure what's a reasonable size of a tree, but I, it shouldn't be like, it should be like, let's just say two inches caliper. Would be... we, uh, is the tree that's going to be sacrificed this pine tree nearest the house? It, yeah, it's kind of lined up with the front door. Got it. Yeah, there's a right. the, the big, beautiful oak tree. We want to keep that. <laughs> yeah. So I was, uh, I was having a, I was, I was getting apoplectic for a minute. Never mind. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, can I just add something real quick? Yes. Um, so we put in an application for the city for a street tree. Um, that application was approved. It sounds like the city is going to plant a tree of their own choice. So I'm not sure what kind of control we're going to have over the replacement tree. Okay. Um, it seems to me the two inch caliber tree near the house and then a tree in front would well compensate for the removal of this pine. I would okay. say so. And I think that if you replace the pine, it could go in the back as well. I think a two inch caliper tree somewhere on the property would be a That's a good call, I think. I don't think it needs to be in the front of the house. Okay. I would agree. I think we're gonna be too crowded again. Yeah. Okay, um, I think we can work that into our plan. Have we a motion? Are we ready for one? I'll make a motion. Um, move, uh, motion to approve as submitted um, with a arborist report being submitted to staff for the removal of the pine tree and a two inch caliper tree to be of the owner's choice to be planted anywhere on the property as a replacement for the pine tree. Very well, and the, the approval is uh, conditioned on the receipt of the arborist report, correct? Correct. Thank you. Second? Second. For the discussion, Moriarty. Yes. Kodheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Bisson. Yes. Decker. Yes. Thank you very much. You're approved. Great. Thank you. I'll get that arborist report. Thank good. you. Have a good day. Next. 
All right, agenda item 10, 1183 Highland. This is to replace all of the siding on the house and the detached garage with James Hardy smooth four inch lap siding. There's currently four different types of siding, including cedar shake, wood lap, vinyl Dutch lap, and wood Dutch lap. The applicant proposes to retain the wood trim around the porch windows, soffits, fascia, and paint it white, and then add wood trim painted white to areas that don't currently have trim. And also to replace the roof with JF slate line English slate shingles with metal ridge roll for hips and ridges. Uh, applicable standards are 3116.11 standards for alteration. Distinguishing characteristics of a property shall not be destroyed. The removal or alteration of any historic materials shall be avoided whenever possible. Uh, deteriorated architectural features shall be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. In the event that replacement is necessary, the new, the new material shall match materials being replaced in composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. Victorian Village guidelines echo that saying that new material that duplicates the size, shape, and texture of an original is appropriate. Um, and on the June 24th business meeting, commissioners requested more information about the trim, especially regarding how it'll be applied around the windows. And they asked if there would be corner boards. Uh, staff has not yet received additional information from the and staff recommends approval of the application as submitted, but with trim and corner board details to be submitted for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate. Do Thank you. Do we have an applicant? Yes, sir. Who is that? That's Jarrett Fuller. All right. Uh, I don't see you. Sorry, my video is uh, spinning here for a second. Sorry. Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but? Yes, I do. Uh, very technically, I'm supposed to be able to see you, but I'll. I, I'm on there now, I think. There you are. Do you swear? Yes, I do. Well, you were, I saw you for a second. I saw your hand move. All right. What have you to add? Um, just ba basically the, the uh, additional information they asked asked for as well were some pictures of the, uh, a cutout sample of the siding, which doesn't seem to be here, but we did submit that documentation prior to uh, the uh, meeting to Kimberly. Um, that actually, the, the, the siding that's on the main structure is actually not the original siding. It is a uh, cellulose type base, uh, asphalt based product that's falling apart when we took it off. Um, the other part is that it's vinyl on the addition part there. There's multiple different types of siding on the, the house itself and, and the detached garage. And basically we're looking to try to just provide some consistency that's, um, you know, consistent with another home that's a few houses down the street that we also provided in this. Um, going with the four inch smooth, maintaining the wood uh, structure, the details above the windows. Um, the areas where we would have to add uh, the wood trim would be there in the vinyl section, um, you know, to try to make it look consistent. And then as far as the question regarding the corners, yes, we would add a corner, uh, a, a corner board on each side to, you know, box that in and make it look more consistent with um, some of the other houses that have that kind of siding. So when you, put on the ground. Sorry. when you pulled off the asphalt shingles, the asphalt siding, what did you find? What's under there? There is a, there is a, uh, a four and a half inch, uh, looks like a beveled type of Dutch lap wood siding under there. Um, the problem is I don't know what the full extent and condition of it is throughout the home. Oh, that's it. It's hard to see, but okay, very well. Discussion. I'm fine, I'm fine with doing the corner boards. That's correct. I would agree in terms of the just the term. Um, the, the portion of that's kind of the addition. Um, I don't necessarily think that he needs to replicate the exact current window trim but just for clarification the existing homes window trim is going to remain that's going to be untouched and then the siding is going to be introduced and then the only new trim on the existing home is going to be the vertical uh corner boards that 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 hissom uh was mentioning i have an issue with reciting the rear addition with exactly the same siding that's on the main house. That is so clearly 
an after added addition. I think it should say addition. I think it does clearly by its structure. <laughs> I would agree. This is, I think the, the so idea about the window never, administration. Would, yeah, well, I, we, I think it, I think it reeks new structure without having to put a different material on it and call it out even further. I agree. I agree. Uh, all right, <clears throat> wanted to raise that. How about the garage? Is it okay to do that the same? Mm -hmm. Yep. Further discussion. Uh, yeah, I just have one thing to clarify what you just said. Are you saying that you don't want us to, you don't think it makes sense to put the same siding on the new addition portion of the house that has vinyl on it? That was me, and I was shouted down by all the other commissioners. So that, uh, that so far we're back to your. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, I just didn't understand what you're saying. You're saying that you want to keep it vinyl on that addition part because it is an addition, is what you're saying? No, no, no. It. it Disregard my comment. It's not shared by the other five. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. There. Uh, all right. So make a motion okay. as submitted, adding the corner boards. Do we have a second? Second. A motion hissum second. Uh, was that Aaron? Yep. Thank you, Moriarty. Yes. 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 You cut in and out. Sometimes it's hard to hear the whole word. Kotheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker, yes. Motion passes. Very well, <laughs> thank you. Next. Next is agenda item 11, 348 West 2nd. The applicant would like to remove three double hung windows on the south elevation and install three double hung wood star pine wood windows with clear glass white interior trim and black exterior capping. New windows should fit within the existing openings and match the sash and pane configuration. The applicant did submit additional photos of the current window conditions, which are on page nine. Um, and Staff would recommend that replacement windows are not uh, would be on the approved list. These are not approved windows. Um, let's see. Standards for alteration 3116.11. Distinguishing characteristics of a property shall not be destroyed. The removal or alteration of historic material or distinctive feature shall be avoided whenever possible. And deteriorated architectural features shall be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. So after taking a look at the additional photos that were submitted, staff recommends that the windows are retained and repaired rather than replaced. Photographic evidence indicated faulty hardware and excess paint, which can be repaired or repainted. Um, staff would recommend continuing the application to allow the applicant time to investigate repair options. Do we have an applicant? Hello, calling all applicants. Hearing nothing, do I have a motion to continue? Motion to continue. Second. For the discussion, Moriarty? Yes. Kodheimer? Yes. Conyers? Sean? Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Hissom? Yes. Decker? Yes, it's continued. Next. All right, next is item 12, 322 Wilbur Avenue. The applicant would like to construct a new two-car garage on the alley at the rear of the lot where there is no existing structure. The garage would have a 22 foot by 22 foot footprint and be located next to an existing parking pad. Um, they provide materials. Um, and let's see, condition requested a scaled and measured site plan at the business meeting which the applicant did provide, it's included in the packet. We also took a look at Sanborn maps that indicated there was historically a garage on the property. These are maps from 1901, 1921, and 1951. Um, applicable standards are that the building height width, mass and proportion affect the degree of compatibility between the old and the new. Uh, the commission shall consider, in addition to pertinent factors, the architectural characteristics typical of structures in the district or listed property. 
uh, and the relationship of this resource to the other structures in the immediate neighborhood. Victorian Village guidelines include uh, that accessory structures such as garages should be designed to complement the primary structure on the site. The detailing might be simpler, um, but should be compatible. Otherwise, appropriateness will be judged according to its own detail and visual impact on adjacent buildings and the village in general. The staff would recommend approval as submitted with the following clarification. Um, this was that a scaled measured site plan should be submitted. Uh, which they have submitted a plan. So if y'all take a look and see if that's what you need. All right. Uh, just, do we have an applicant? Yes, you do. I'm here. Uh, Mr. Ray. Yes, Ray Phillips. You, uh, Ray Phillips, you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give is the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Very well. Do you have anything to add? No, I don't. Discussion. I just, oh, this okay. is Sean, I'll go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sean. The, the, the one thing I just was curious is, is the main door that addresses, the main garage door that addresses the alley is a single, you know, two-car garage door in lieu of uh, it being two separate garage doors. So uh, I know turning radius and a lot of that plays into that decision, so I just didn't know if um, the alley condition warranted a uh, single garage door. Applicant. No, uh, no, it doesn't. It was just a preference uh, by the homeowner. So it would be more appropriate to have two single doors. That's usually our preference. Any I other? agree. I agree with that. If the alley um, width allows for it, uh, it should have two separate doors. Any other comments? I agree. And then the detail of the door is wrong. Yeah. Shouldn't it be just flat? Yep. You don't want any uh, the raised panel look? No. Too frou-frou. What about the doors facing the house? Same? Windows OK, but get rid of all this. Yep. Yep. Any other discussion? Anybody disagree with me and Mr. Hissom? <laughs> um, I don't remember the, the detail on garage doors needing to be plain. Haven't we approved something other than that? Not, those, not that many panels, Aaron. All right, but if it's two single doors, it would be less panels. Per right. door. I, I think this garage bespeaks simplicity, particularly with the alley side of it. And then the outside of it's got a lot going on anyway with lights, windows, man door, and all that other stuff. I think Jeff was right, but that's me. Any other discussion? Are either any of those changes problematic? Ray? I would have to talk to the homeowner. I know two doors is twice as expensive as one door. Uh, the, um, That's the, the default for the neighborhood, though. Go ahead. The, it's a 22, uh, 22 foot wide garage. So let me think this through. Two foot on either side, that gives me 18 foot. Two foot in the center between the doors gives me 16 foot. And that's two eight foot doors that um, so uh, uh, bringing that down. So I would have to look at the um, the turning radius in the garage to see if uh, that eight foot would work. However, if you look at the door, the garage is on either side of this all around it. If you stood in the alley and looked around at the two car garages, they all have two car doors. I don't have a picture of that with me. The we purple garage you see there is a is a is a single large door. It wouldn't surprise me, but on the other hand, some of these garages went up a long time ago. Right. Well, if you're talking about the appropriateness for the neighborhood. All right. 
Do we have any further discussion? We have a motion. Somebody. I would love to make a motion, but I, I'm I'm I don't know if he's he's ready. I, I don't know if he's going to accept what. We, so it seems like it would be a motion to continue to allow him to go back to the homeowner. No, um, I would like if. If, I, I'm like, sorry to interrupt. I think the best thing to do is to prove it for two doors, and if that doesn't work, he can come back. I, I agree. I would, Thank you. I would also okay. just say, looking at it, it looks like the vast majority of, of garages here have two doors. Uh, and there are some older garages that appear to have one larger door. All right, do we have a motion for two doors and no raised panels on them? And otherwise it's submitted. Somebody. Okay, uh, can I uh, just add one other thing? So the, yes, the, the smaller yard side garage door, that is not seen from the street. That is only gonna be seen from the uh, homeowner's backyard. Uh, so the style of it, what they're looking for is a carriage uh, style door. Uh, not, they're not look, they're not what, uh, aiming to look at a, um, a flat, uh, uh, um, uh, undecorative door. So, the so reason they... I'm fine. I'm fine with that back, that back, uh, man door being like a two panel. And I think that carriage door they're looking for, it's needs to be a more simpler carriage door. If that's what you're looking for. There's it's a the, gar down. the garage on the other side of the alley has a carriage door. It that is something you could look at as appropriate. Okay. Uh, do we want to have the carriage door submitted to staff for approval? I think that's I think subcommittee. I think it can go to staff. I, I agree. All right. Did we have a motion or did I miss it? Can I? Oh, sorry, homeowner. Homeowner here. I don't know if I can say anything or not, but I did have one clarifying comment. Are you are you the homeowner, Mister Jeff Tur Jeff Turwin? Yep. I can't. Your print is small. All right. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give is the truth, the whole truth? I do. And nothing but. Very well. What have you to add? Uh, we've lived on the street now for eight years, and the the neighbors right behind us have the two single garage doors and they have the center post and they have to back into our property and do a three point turn every time they come in and out of their garage. And they've actually struck a contractor who was parked in our off street behind us because they have a, a complicated turn in and out every time um, they go into their garage. So that was actually part of our motivation to do a single door to, to ease that turning arc and be able to get in and out of the garage and not having that wider garage. Um, to do that. So that was part of our motivation. We see it most every day. So I just want to clarify that point. That is a wide alley though, and it should be a sufficient turning radius. Maybe they're just bad drivers. <laughs> they might be. That, or their automobiles are too big. That too. I'm measuring 17 feet, which is, you know, greater a standard alley let's let's so, have a motion and if it doesn't with the understanding that if it doesn't work the applicant can come back yeah yeah do we have a motion a motion to approve as submitted with a uh, uh, amendment of two doors in lieu of one door on the alley side and the door on that alley side to be uh, more simplified um, and those selections, those door selections to be reviewed by staff. Well, what about the carriage doors? I thought that was going to be the one that staff was going to look at and the alley doors were going to be flat. I think they yeah, can look I, at all the doors. I, I would Pardon? agree. I would agree, Lisa. That I think that both doors, they, they should take an inventory, look at them, and then they should submit both door solutions. Um, back to staff for final approval. Very well. Do we have a second? Second. For the discussion. All right. Here we go. Moriarty. Yes. 
Kodheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Hissom. Yes. Decker, yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you also Let very us much. Let know that if you can't get in or out of this thing. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Next. Commissioners, I'm out of here. Thank Hi, you, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Let the record reflect we're down to four. All right. Okay. So just noting that it is six. We do want to continue. Is that right? Yeah, do we? I think I we. Continue to about 625. Okay. And we will keep I'll going. Be willing to continue to 625 as well. Great. So item 13 is a wall alley between Greenwood Avenue and 5th Avenue. The applicant would like to install 16 LED lights along uh, staggered on either side of the alley. The lights would be mounted on four buildings throughout the alley. Lighting would include RGBW um, light fixtures with movable heads and four photo cell sensors, and all lights would be installed in the mortar, not on the bricks. Uh, the applicant has provided a little more information as well, which said that for each of the four buildings, there would be one exterior outlet uh, per building. And they would daisy chain the lights on each building with black cord attached to the brick, um, which I was a little bit unclear of how that would be attached to the brick. The daisy chain, so that's a question I have standards for alteration state that whenever possible, a new addition or alteration shall be accomplished so that its future removal will not impair the essential form and integrity of the structure. Short North design guidelines state that simple modern fixtures should be used when there's no physical or historical documentation of original fixture or when no fixture would have existed historically. And that lighting fixtures should be of commercial quality material and construction, but have a residential aesthetic in terms of design, color, and other visual qualities. Uh, so the staff recommends, let's see. Oh, the, well, I was going to recommend continuing the application so the commission can review the mounting and electrical plans, but we did just get those sent in. Um, so those should be in the packet, which you guys did receive yesterday. But um, yes, I'm not sure if you'll need more time to review. Have we an applicant? Yep, I'm here. This is Caitlin. Uh, who is you? Caitlin Dunn. Hi, Caitlin. Do you swear from the testimony you're going to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. There you go. You're you're a shadow of your former yeah, self. Sorry. You can't. <laughs> Very well. Okay. What have you to add, if anything? That was a good summary. So I know we've been having di these discussions with the lights in Wall Alley um, for a while now. We really wanted to kind of bring an element of art um, to the other three buildings, specifically the two on the other side that we weren't able to put any um, paint on the brick. So we're going to be super um, careful with the installing the lights into the mortar. Um, we, I, I put a couple pictures in there if, as we just kind of tested a couple things, um, but you can see it's not intrusive into the brick. We'd have those lights where you see those green dots um, scattered throughout. I put on an additional picture, roughly the height, but um, we'd also want to minimize any sort of cord. So we're hoping to tap into all of the existing um, uh, cords that are already there, you can kind of see in a couple of the pictures. But if 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 you reviewed, you probably kind of got the general idea. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I am totally baffled how you're going to wire this. These so, are this is going to be exterior grade electric cord that leads where. So it'll lead to each individual building. So, for example, the one on the back of the short north stage wall, there's an existing light already there, kind of smack dab in the middle of the mural um, that has a line there. Um, for the building next to that towards the south, there's also an existing power line that we tap into for that. Um, so it's a small, and you can kind of see in one of the pictures, it's a small um, black cord that would run to the opposite side of the building into a power source. Okay, and how would this be attached to the wall? So it it would go right into the mortar. I don't know if, if you have a picture in there, Sarah, of just kind of the mock-up. Um, but they it's one of, it's one of those jobbies with like a uh, 
hook at the end of it and then a flat thing that accepts a fastener and it just pins the cable against the wall. Is that what you're talking about using? For the cord? Yeah. Uh, yes. There you go. Does everybody have a clear picture of what this is? Anybody? Discussion? Yeah. Yeah, I think what I was worried just about is what was going to happen with, you know, are we going to express conduit or in order to provide power? So with the understanding that the new power cord or uh, is going to be almost, uh, you know, installed as uh, being supported almost in a similar fashion as cable uh, or, you know, cable, meaning direct mounted to the veneer. Uh, and not a lot of conduit uh, into the adjacent power source individually, uh, I think that I'm okay from that standpoint. Should be stretched uh, fairly taut though, not all saggy, right? We'll, we'll keep That's it very correct. clean. Yes, I keep think- it very, Keep it very what? Keep it very clean and taut against the wall. Real good. Anything else? I think I would suggest noting that this is a sort of temporary art installation versus a like permanent um, decorative like lighting installation um, because I think that differentiation is kind of important here. Like if you think of holiday lighting that goes up um, seasonally, so the season for this might be just a couple years, but is not necessarily an application that is, you know, architectural and meant to be here forever. And I think that's important just because these lights are not, you know, typically the kind of lighting that we would approve in. They're visible, the actual fixture is visible. Um, and so I think that that makes it different than, you know, the lighting that people put over their garage doors. Further discussion. I have a question. Why, why is this a lighting fixture that uh, we would normally not approve? Like, why are we not just doing asking for goosehead lights like we do for every other applicant? These are, I mean, these are serving a goosehead light isn't going to be an RGBW controllable like DMX controlled light. This is a so, light that points that in like, a different different direction than a goose head too. These oh, are um, these are an animated lights, programmable okay. lights um that are like for place making. You, you could not get a fixture like that that would be an architectural permanent part of a building. Tell me about the uh, programming of this light, these lights and what kind of exciting light show we're going to have in this alley. Hey, you can pro that was for me, right? Jack? Yes. Yes. You can program it. Um, however, you want, we had a conversation with our public art committee this morning um, and each wall would would look different. So you can also to your earlier point point some of them down towards the, the street and some of them on the opposite building. So by the mural, we would probably do cool tones, blue, purple, green to kind of accentuate the, the mural that's there. Um, but we can change it. Um, however, we want to, um, we want it to look artistic um, and kind of place make that alley. Um, but it's super programmable um, and we can update it as, as frequently as we need to. Would you anticipate programming these lights to be animated? That is to change right in front of your eyes or, more, or are you talking about programmable in the sense that you can pick colors and combinations and then just have a steady light of that hue shining on whatever you want ever to to shine yeah, it they, would, they would change in front of your eyes. So it would be a blue, then to a purple, then to a, you know, a, a different color. Um, you can do that as fast as you want um, and as intentional as you want. So they, they would turn on every single night at a given time in whatever show we wanted them 
to show similar to like the arches, how the arches would kind of sometimes in holiday do red and then green and then white. That's similar to what these lights could do as well. Uh, we can't, we don't allow signs to do that. Uh, although these well, are lights, not signs, but Liesel's uh, comment that uh, this should be temporary is becoming more and more prescient. <laughs> right. So remember the 7 Eleven North High, they have LED color changing lights. And we said those are architectural lights um, that light the architectural features of the building. And those ones are only allowed to change once every 24 hours. So they're not allowed to be animated where obviously the short north arches are animated. So these are a completely different thing. And I think we have to treat them differently because this is an art installation. And so emphasizing that this is a temporary thing, um, I don't know if it makes sense for it to be reviewed on a regular basis, you know, sort of like the the murals that stick on the walls are, but it has, I think it somehow has to be di differentiated from the, the architectural RGBW lighting. Other comments? Uh, my comment is that I'm just not that impressed with the fixture itself. Like I understand it's not gonna be up forever, but a couple of years is not exactly temporary. Like temporary signage is six months. If this is gonna be up for longer than six months, I prefer to see a more substantial fixture. I think that there are some out there that can change color and be programmable. Um, and I, you know, like if this is the light that we're going with, then I think it needs some sort of base to to hide where the wires meet the light to hide hide that like the the base structure that's attaching to the mortar. Basically, I think it looks kind of messy. Uh, Sean. Any thoughts? Uh, I would. I, I understand the, the conditions, and I, I agree with uh, the commissioners in terms of the temporary nature and kind of stressing that fact. Um, uh, you know, Aaron has a has a good point, and just in terms of how it's mounted, um, I, I'm not sure if there's a an alternate way of mounting this particular fixture in order to try to you know uh, enhance the cleaning up of it, uh, but. Um, Given it's temporary, I may, I may be um, willing to just go ahead and allow that to to uh, continue to. Apple, what's a what's a uh, reasonable figure for coming back and renewing it? A year? Um, Carolyn. Oh, I thought you said. Did you? Yeah. So I think um, just to note on Aaron's comment, these um, these lights that were hung up in this picture are kind of examples of how they would be in the mortar. Um, but they, in this picture is are attached to, um, a generator because we didn't tap into the electrical just for, so it does look a little bit messier than it will look up on the wall. I think we really want to bring a lot of light and, um, just make this a cool place because the alley it's been an issue for so long and i know when we originally came through with the art a lot of light was was specified as like being an option so i think temporary we can work with um as long as that duration is a little bit longer only because of the the budget and the funds that we're putting into these lights um it would be hard for us to come back in a year um, after we've invested thousands and thousands of dollars in putting these lights up. Um, but I can, I mean, if there's anything too, that, that would make it not temporary that I can explore and see kind of, um, what more you might be interested in to make it a permanent fixture, whether it is just a cleaner fixture, I can do that. Um, unless that temporary period is like, you know, five years, which I, that might not make it temporary. I don't, I'm not sure. Well, the temporary, uh, the temporary, the one year renewal doesn't mean we can't just keep renewing it from year to year. Yeah. Uh, but, but, um, I, 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 I think this is a situation that we need to monitor. And uh, because this is, if it were anywhere else, it would be inappropriate for lots of reasons, including the the way you've uh, wired them and everything else. The whole thing speaks temporariness. 
And yes. If it were so, anywhere else, the uh, dancing lights and changing hues would probably be a big problem too. But we understand so, what you're trying to do with this alley. All right, do we have a motion? I was just gonna suggest a light like this typically um, would be mounted to like an arm or a pole or something like it's intended to be bolted in and movable. So I don't know if there's a hardware piece or something that could be fabricated that would dress it up a little bit um, if you wanted it to be a little more permanent. The, only, the, the real thing is that a light like this raw by itself isn't something we would typically approve on a, at least a permanent basis. Okay, and, yes. I wanted to clarify my comments. And the animation of it. So it's, it's, it's more of a, again, it's a, a technicality, I guess, but in, you're familiar with the technicalities that we're um, <laughs> dealing with, but um, I think either a, a way of dressing it up, you're not gonna find an architectural light that does this, I know this. Um, so I think a way of addressing it either as a, temporary installation or to dress it off a bit. <laughs> Do we want to have a, a Aaron, you were trying to get in. I just wanted to clarify that I'm very in favor of adding lighting to this and I'm okay with like the exterior conduit and all that. I just, I prefer we treat it as a, a permanent structure because I can't see a time when we're going to not want lighting on this alley. And therefore I think we should approach it with the kind of fixtures that would be permanently installed. Um, and and I would. This is not the kind of fixture that I would want to continuously approve on an annual basis. So if it's going to be, if it's going to come up every year, then it should just be a permanent fixture. But somebody else is going to want to put it on their building and have their building animated. So that's the problem. <laughs> Wood companies is going to say, why couldn't we have Seven Eleven North High Street? animate a waving American flag or something. You know what I mean? So that's really the problem. Yeah, I see. Okay. Do we have a motion? To approve a submitted as a temporary lighting installation renewable every year. Um, I, I, I will motion to approve as submitted as a temporary Installation that has to be renewed every year. <laughs> and as submitted includes uh, all the specifications about how everything is going to be attached to mortar and how the cables are going to be run, right? Taut. Right, taut cables and mounted in the mortar. All right, do we have a second? Second. That's Conyers, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. right, do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, no, Moriarty. Yes. Yes. Kudheimer. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Decker. Yes, because this isn't actually painting the brick, which by the <laughs> way is not temporary, it's permanent. <laughs> All right, motion passes. Thank you. Next. Okay, next is item 14, 867 Neal Avenue. The applicant would like to remove decaying bushes and four trees in the yard, remove three pine trees on the south fence, install two gates at northeast and northwest corners of the backyard to match the existing, add three skylights to the carriage house per submitted drawings. Uh, the applicant did provide dimensioned elevations per commission feedback at the business meeting. Victorian village guidelines state that skylights placed so that visibility from the street is minimized are appropriate. Um, installation of flat light, that is installation of flat skylights that are nearly flush with the surface of the roof. Staff recommends approving the application as submitted with a tree replacement plan submitted to staff for review and approval prior to the issuance of a certificate. All right. Thank you. Oh, 
Do we have an applicant? I think I, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, Who's great. our applicant, Mr. Car Carson? Yep, Carson Thrush. Carson Thrush, do you swear or affirm the testimony you will give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Very well. What have you to add? Mm, nothing. What do you think, commissioners? Aaron, what do you think of this? Yeah, I was just going to ask if we had an arborist look at this, like we did the last submission about moving trees. Yeah, I submitted an arborist report. Okay, sorry. Lisa, what do you think? Um, yeah, um, damn it. Excuse me. This is just for the, we're just talking about the landscaping right now. Yeah, yeah. let's talk about the landscaping part A. Yeah. I think the landscaping is uh, allowable. Anybody else have any uh, comments on the landscaping? No comments on the landscaping. And I'm sorry, what did staff want kick back at? Staff would like a tree replacement plan. Very well. Uh, that is in the PowerPoint. It includes putting Arbor Vitae uh, as a wall for the air conditioners uh, in the e southeast corner of the, of the backyard. Guys, I'm sorry. I need to jump off. Bye, Liesl. That's three. Okay. Uh, Arbor Vitae. Arbor Vitae count as a tree? Or a I don't know. I don't know either. I'm also, I can't find the plan diagram with where they're being planted. Uh, it is slide five of the PowerPoint. Sorry, slide six. Slide six. Slide six and slide three. Can you go to slide three? Uh, stop. Oh, you you have the um, you have the older one. This is the this is the, actually the original PowerPoint. I amended it after uh, hearing you guys' business meeting to give a, a better indication. Do you guys have that updated one? I I sent it in to. Um, it's in there. If you scroll to the bottom, perhaps. Is it the updated one? There's the Arbor, there's the Arbor's report. Uh, yeah, it ends with uh, the All City Arborist. No, that's not my um, that's not my most updated one that I I sent. Um, oh, so how many pages I, is yours? How many pages should it be? Because it might have gotten added out of order. Okay, uh, mine is eleven. Hmm. Now, I did submit two different uh, PowerPoints. There's the one that includes the skylights, which is on the carriage house, and then there's the one that includes the backyard landscaping. I will check what we have. We would just want to make sure that we have a tree replacement plan before issuing a certificate. If you stay on that page right here, I can describe it a little bit for you. In the in the right side of that photo, you see some of the air conditioners. Uh, essentially, I'm just putting trees in front of the air conditioner so you can't see them. Yeah, does staff have an opinion on whether or not an arborvitae is a tree or a shrub? Yeah, I'm not sure. Does Connie or Kim, can you speak to that? I'm not familiar with what it is, so. I have I would, to default to Connie. Yeah, I would I would consider our providing to be a shrub, not a tree. I mean, it's it's generally put up as a sort of a fencing thing, but it's it's not a tree. All right. Are we getting rid of all four of these uh, small trees that we see in this photo? Yes. 
Uh, the the if it matters, the arborvitae, the, the particular name of it is arborvitae emerald green tree. Yeah, no, I know what an arborvitae looks like. I don't. I think it's a shrub, not a tree. So I'm not sure that that would count. I, I'm fine with that being used as a screening material for the um, air conditioning units, but I don't think that that uh, counts as like replacing in kind um, for tree removal. Okay. Uh, what, so what's going to happen to all these hedges and everything else in the, in the yard? Does that all go too? Yeah, that's going to be removed. So you'd basically nuke what's there to make a flat grassed area and then have these tall pine-like things in front of your air conditioners. Yep. So what we told the last applicant was that, um, you know, you could replace those trees anywhere else in your property. So potentially could fit one or two on the front yard and two in the backyard, and that might give you enough usable space. But we'll I don't think, uh, having walked by Carson's house numerous times, I don't see where he's going to put any more trees in his front yard, which is dominated by a gigantic sycamore. That's that true. Uh, That's is true. that correct? So if we're looking at tree replacement, it's probably in the backyard i think we need uh some more detail uh because in my opinion we need to replace if we're going to take out all this greenery and replace it with a monoculture we need to talk about adding at least two decent trees to the backyard okay i i guess my 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 thought would be is seven trees because that's what i'm looking at trying to remove in total seven trees is kind of a lot for a backyard especially when i still have it there is still a gigantic tree in the backyard as well um i see four where are the four. other three yeah they're going to be on slide let me see here If you look on slide nine, I'm waiting for the city to pull it up. That's slide nine on, on this PowerPoint. Mm. Here, 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 here's what I, I can tell you. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, the couple remaining commissioners that are still on with me. Uh, I don't have a real good picture of what you intend to do. I need to see a good plan with some replacement trees, not necessarily one for one, because I understand you're trying to make some open space and this is filled up with a bunch of little trees that haven't matured yet. But uh, you need to give us a real good picture of what this is going to look like with some replacement trees in it. I, I uh, respectfully, I, I did. I, I submitted that. Um, this just isn't my most updated PowerPoint. I'm sorry, but uh, due to circumstances beyond our control, we can't see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I can't vote on what I can't see, and uh, I'm sorry. So do we have a motion to continue part A? Motion to continue part A. Do I have a second? Sean, you have to second. second it. You have no choice. Yeah, I'll second it. <laughs> Very yeah, well. Second. Discussion. Uh, Moriarty. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Decker. Yes. It's continued. Uh, and hopefully you can work out with staff so we've got the right stuff to look at next time and can tell. I think you, from our discussion, you know what needs to be addressed. And if you're, what staff has now doesn't address it, you need to give it to them. All right, what about these skylights? Three of them, two on south, one on west. There's, before we, before we move on, just quickly, and I don't know if it was that only related to the backyard treescape or landscape elements, because there's other items outside of that, meaning that there's the gates and things of that nature too that is part of the backyard. So I just want to make sure that what our motion was. 
Uh, right, we continue the entire landscaping right package, but if, we, the if, there's something, if there's something right. we can discuss or want to discuss about the gate detail and everything else, or is that something you think can be separated out and approved? I, I personally, it seems, like it, it seems like it can be separated. So I just didn't know if, if that was, that would help the homeowner uh, from that standpoint, because it's, like it's separate, you know, so that's all. All right. Any uh, discussion about the gates and fencing? We have a good idea of what's going to happen here. I'm looking around for a plan that shows me where the fence is. It's um, the, the slide that we're currently looking at. It shows the northeast corner there and then the northwest corner. Uh, with all the blue stuff. There we go. The bird's eye view. Yeah. So you see in the yellow there is the highlighted of what I plan on making the addition of. The purple is existing structures. I will say that the uh, neighbor's fence, the one that I'm tying into was, I think he put it up maybe last month or the month before. So you guys, it should be fairly fresh in your memory. Is he consented to this? Yes. All right. Any discussion about the fence or gate? I can't see what I the just... fence is. Just quickly from that standpoint is, is right now, anything that you're adding, Carson, is not tying into their fence or is it just adjacent to it? It looks like there's a shared kind of a shared four by four from that standpoint. That shared it, four by four is acceptable to them? It is. Yeah, it is. I talked to him about sharing it. He said he was fine with it. As long as I use the same materials that he used is okay. what he, is he wanted to do. And I would want that anyways because it looks more... Yeah. You know, okay. Is that something like cedar? Probably looks like it. Yeah, he used six by six posts, and then cedar is what he used, and then he had a okay. cap on top. Okay. So your gate is um, kind of squared off, but his is rounded. Those are the only yeah. differences I can see. That is a difference. I thought it was acceptable because his house is much. It's got a turret. It's got much more round features. Where I'm an American four square, I'm much more squared off. I thought it was kind of more of an ode to our architectural differences in our houses anyways. Okay, so I see a uh, slice through of the fence on the next page. But the fence is composed of, is the side plating your vertical flats? Yes. No, that's two by four. Yeah. I guess, what do you refer to as side plating? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you, because this says six by six post cedar panels, mm -hmm. two by four side plating. Oh, side plating, I see. Sorry, I wasn't reading my own slide. Yes, two by four okay, side the, plating, yes. So the cedar panels, mm -hmm. what dimension are the cedar panels? Uh, the ones that he has out there right now are one by six, but in actual dimensions, that would be five and a half inches by uh, three quarters of an inch. That's just, you know, it's... Okay, so they're one by six cedar boards. Yes. Space between them? Uh, it looks about a quarter of an inch right now. I'm going to match it. Maybe an eighth of an inch, probably an eighth of an inch. It's not in here. Oh, well. Uh, is this enough that we can I, have a motion to approve it? Um, there's one more item, Carson, and I, I just noticed it. I'm sorry. It's the four by four with the gate. Unfortunately, when you tie into your fence and you utilize that six by six that he currently has, the the hinges and such, will, that gate, his gate will not operate, or his or her gate, I shouldn't say it. I'm sorry. It will not operate. So, um if you look at the image, go back uh, to probably slide maybe two, and you look at the image to the far left is what I what I'm looking at. Oh, his there. his his gate will still open to a a full one uh, ninety degrees, so he can get in his house. The if you look at his hinges, you're talking about his rounded gate there. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, 
So where his hinges are, they don't reach past the halfway point of that six by six post. So where my cedar would tie in, it, it wouldn't infringe on that. Okay. So your top and board bottom cross members would be, would attach to that above and below its hinges. Correct. And then you'd probably leave a little space there uh, so he could get to his hinges when you put in your first vertical one by six. It would be very close. Um, you'd probably have to use a uh, drill attachment to get to him, but yeah, you could. I'm not looking to make enemies. I'll say that. Right, right. You're gonna you're gonna leave him a little space. So okay, I get it. Anything else? No, nope, looks good. Do we want to make a motion to approve the fence, or do we need more detail? I'll make One a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. You go ahead. I just want to make sure the gate shows one piece of wood, but it's actually one by sixes on the bottom part. Right? I'm Back here, the purple picture, the one beneath that, that says fence detail, says gate detail. Yeah. And I can't tell what this is. <laughs> Looks like a square gate. And then it looks like it's got various cross pieces. But what's in the bottom of it? It's two by fours on either side. What's the what's the center pan what's the center bottom panel? Is that one piece or a bunch of one no, by it, six? It's, it's the only one by six is on the very top. Everything else is just paneling and then two by fours. Well, on the bottom, it shows some big opaque thing inside the two befores. Yeah, that's the that's where the paneling sits between the two two by fours. Right. Okay. What is this? Is it uh, one large piece of cedar? Is it several one by sixes side by side? What is it? Well, the the cedar panels are one by sixes, so it's going to be there because you're looking at it kind of. Uh, that's a what do you call it a a, a cross cut? Uh, you're gonna that's gonna be every you know six inches. You're gonna have a cedar. I'm looking next to it. Gate detail. Oh, gate detail. Sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to figure out what the uh, center part of the gate is. You've already explained the fence. The center part of the gate. Oh, it's uh oh, and it's opaque. I see what you're saying. Yes, that's that is also cedar shake. Um, and it's going to have the same pattern and dimension as the fence does. Uh, yeah, it's, it's I assume they'll, they'll be butted up against each other. If you look at the picture of my neighbor's fence, um, where he's got that curved kind of uh, artistic, yeah. architectural thing, I'm, I'm literally just copying his exact style. I'm just, instead of rounding my top, I'm just making it square. We just need to call out things because your drawings don't say them. No problem. All right. I'd rather be. Are, are we ready for a motion? Or not? No, we yeah. are. I was going to let Sean do it. <laughs> okay. A motion to approve as submitted uh, the fence, which is maybe item B. Uh, so, item B, a motion to approve the fence as submitted um, with the clarifications that, um, you know, the, the dimensions will, the dimensions and material will match the existing adjacent neighbor's fence and the gate itself will just be squared off in lieu of round. Staff, is that going to do it for you based on the discussion that we've had? I think it should be fine. Very well. Do we have a second? Second. For the discussion. All right, roll call, Moriarty. Yes. Conyers. Yes. Decker, yes. Part B passes. Part C, skylights.
Any issues? Uh, I can, if I might speak into this one just slightly. Uh, the problem is, is uh, it's just very dark without the skylights. So, and I also forgot them on the previous uh, time I was submitting. But everything, everything else, according to what you guys approved, is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is that I'd, I'd like to have these skylights in the plans, and they're the they're the Velux skylights. I think you guys are pretty familiar with them. Yep. They open. No. Fixed. Fixed. I think the only one that troubles me a little bit is the one that faces the alley. That's all. It's just. I think that our previous approval of skylights for maybe the carriage house that was done before was only on the north and south ends. I agree with that, Moriarty. Aaron, yeah, what do you think? It looks like there's already a skylight installed in one of uh, the photographs. That's true. I when I <laughs> I was looking over all the plans and I recognized that I totally missed it. I'm willing to remove it. Obviously, I need to get approval. Um, like I said, it was just an oversight. Uh, my other comment was I thought that we talked about skylights the last time we discussed the garage. Um, but essentially, I'm mistaken. In that. Yeah. So the first rendition before it fell down, I, I did have skylights on it in that place. And when I did the second rendition and when I was getting it approved, I just simply forgot to put them on. So we had approved them way back when, and then I did a, a you know, the revision of everything, and then I forgot to put them back on. Yeah, uh, I can, think. Can you clarify the locations of the skylight? Sorry, you, you guys I'm were sorry, yeah. at the same time. Ahead, no, I was just going to say, I think the discussion that I remember having is that, you know, like the, the garage fell down and we wanted it replaced in kind. And the last garage did not have skylights and therefore the new garage should not have skylights. That's what I remember talking about. Yes, after it, after it fell down, there was no discussion of putting the skylights on. I just simply forgot to have them on the plan. Go ahead, Sean. No problem, Aaron. I apologize. Um, Carson, can you? I, I do recall when the whole, when the when the original carriage house was being proposed um, as going through the modifications of the doors and windows and things of that nature prior to the roof falling down. Can you express the two locations that you had skylights approved? I'd have to look through the plans. I, I don't quite call. I remember that they were there, but I, I'd have to look through the plans. Okay, because I, I, I'm remembering that they were the north and the south face. They might just have been. Given, just, just given consistency of what the commission typically tries to accomplish. That's all. Sure. Do we want to have, uh, based on my agreement with Sean, it sounds like they're two of the three commissioners are not in favor of the skylight facing the alley, but have no problem with the ones proposed on the south face. Is that right? And maybe three of three, but. I think that's, 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 that's my thought. Yeah. Do we yeah. want to have a motion to that effect? Part C. Uh, approving sure. the approving the two. Sure. Motion to approve item C of application BB twenty oh seven oh fourteen. Uh with the uh, removal of the skylight on the alley side of the roof, garage roof, and um, approval of the two. Sorry, I can't find the elevation now. South. South side. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> 
Otherwise, we can't vote. Okay, all in favor? No, Moriarty, yes or no? Yes. Conyers? Yes. Decker? Yes. Now, the way this has been structured, you really didn't get a vote on your south, your, I'm sorry, west facing skylight. Do you want one or do you want to? Uh, I suppose come back with something else, or what do you want to do about that? I amend my west facing skylight to be a mirror image just on the east side. Exact same measurements, it's a perfect square. Or, I don't know, is that something we can do right now? I don't know, staff. <laughs> we approved a skylight on the east side in the lo uh, mirror image location. Could you craft a certificate? I think I can. I don't know if there'd be a reason or a rule that would let me not be allowed to do that. Um, we'll hear if any other staff speaks up about that. Is there any objection? Uh, is there, do any of the other commissioners have an objection since it would not face the alley and not be visible from the street? Uh, Staff would want like in drawings just what was going to happen, but otherwise it seems like we should be able to just announce. So the motion should be contingent on uh, submitting drawings to staff showing the exact dimension and location. Got it? Great. Okay, motion to approve a skylight at 867 Neal Avenue on the east side elevation of the garage uh, pending staff approval of drawings to be similar but mirror image of the currently submitted application a mirror image of the west facing skylight on the current mirror application. Image of the west facing skylight correct thank you in dimension and location all right do we have a second i'll second and this is part d all right moriarty yes Conyers. yes Decker, yes. All right, having no further business. Carson, you're dismissed. <laughs> Have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right, we've got 12 minutes for the highlight of the evening. I don't know what we can do with it. Yes, so we have 23 West 2nd, which is um, proposed demolition of a banquet addition and proposed new seven story mixed use building. This was here previously as conceptual. It initially came in uh, as an action item, but following the June 24th business meeting, there have been some changes. The applicant uh, refer or has said that they would like to request a conceptual review of the overall design at this time. Um, so let's see, what should we... So staff would recommend approval of massing and overall design as a conceptual approval, but then and recommends approval of variances and then all design details, including materials, color and fixtures should return for further review at an upcoming hearing. So this project includes um, the new construction of the mixed use building, uh, a two level parking deck. Um, they've included some material information. Um, there's some brick relief information. Uh, they've recessed the entryways of the townhomes and they've designated an area to be used for drop off and move in. So the lots of things have changed since last month, but um, at the business meeting commissioners had comments about the finishes of all of the materials, um, such as a spreadsheet that has information for every material. You'd like to know about garage ventilation, how electricity would be run, washer dryer events, locations, cut sheets for windows, doors, and lights. So these are all the things that uh, the applicant is now looking at conceptually. And then we'd like um, a vote on the variances, if that's clear. Um, and then there are some speakers as well. All right, who are our speakers? So first I have Bill Wood. Bill, are you there? I'll find him. Uh, I see his face. I see his face. Lisa, are you a speaker? I think so. Why Lisa. don't we take you next? Take you now. 
I put away my notes. I didn't think we were going to do this tonight. <laughs> well, one of the woods. I guess no, I'm you're confused. muted. I guess I'm confused as to what you're voting on tonight, and if only well, three. Well, we aren't voting on anything yet. We don't have a motion. And my yeah. own view is that uh, we are. There are only three of us left, and I'm not prepared to vote on anything. But okay. Can I just share some information? You may. Um, I really think you've got three minutes. Okay, they need a sun study. They need a traffic study because that's still one alley that goes in between second and price, and they're going to have that cut off. Um, because that is an ingress, ingress and egress twenty four seven. There's some other information I wanted to share with you about the property at twenty three. Um. The EPA is aware of that building, that it has an excess of asbestos, and that the chimney in the back is a bird sanctuary. Um, my other concern is there's been no mention of the property at 37 Second Avenue. All right. Any or other? Any plans for them to do anything with it? I'm sorry, Lisa, are you done? I guess. I mean, it's still just too bad, too big, too into the neighborhood, too white. Everything else that I don't like about it. Thank you. <laughs> is Bill uh, um, Bill awake now? Bill said he, has, he said you mute you, you muted him, but you can unmute. Somebody okay. unmute Bill. Hey. <laughs> Bill, we're looking at your ceiling. There you are. Yeah, I'm going back to my time's back. A, time's wasting. We'll never hear from anybody <laughs> by okay. seven o'clock. Go. Okay. You swear to affirm uh, your comments are the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. I do. Very I, well. Yeah. All right. Even though you've gone much longer than the uh, email said that uh, that we got from uh, the, I'm not sure which lady she was, um, that it was going to end at six. As far as 23, as far as 23, well, the, the, the project is called 23 West 2nd Avenue. However, they are not and have not given you any proposed work for the address 23 West 2nd Avenue, which is the old Brinker building, which is a, a historic building. They have owned it for three and a half years and have not done anything to it. There have been, in the last 12 months, three major vagrant eliminations from the building. One had 10 police cars, and they evicted 16 people. Another had police come, and they refused to enter the building until the dog squad, the canine squad, come came because they were afraid of going in the building. This is what we have in the neighborhood next to us. They have done nothing on that building. They have done nothing to preserve it. It's an eyesore in the neighborhood. And in, you guys have to, before you approve the huge development, you have to make sure that inside that approval, there's work to be done simultaneously on 23 West 2nd and also 37 West 2nd. On 37 West 2nd, they have had code violations, which they had to take care of, and all they did was put a slap of coat of paint, and the building is still falling apart. You guys have got to have that be one development in which at the same time as they build the large development, that they work on the Brinker building at 23 West 2nd and the house at 37 West 2nd Avenue. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Three minutes up? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Aren't you I thought I detected a comma. I, I have a comma, but um, I just another, another quick thing. You guys are an architectural commission, and in the past couple of years, you have approved at north high and forth a beautiful development you have approved on price right across the street from where this development will be a beautiful brick development 
on Park Avenue, Wood did a magnificent job on a development. Do your job. You're an architectural commission. Make them do something that's appropriate for the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Do we have any more public comments? And I forgot to even deal with the applicant, which I <laughs> intend to do before we leave. There's two more. Um, third is Kathy Reinhardt. And it's 657, so three minutes from now. Hi. I agree with what my neighbors have already said. Um, I'm still very concerned that this is off of High Street and it's more of a High Street type of building. Um, size and mass still bothers me too. I did want to put in the point which I think Mr. Decker's already said that voting, if there's any kind of vote tonight with only three commissioners, I don't think that's appropriate. Um, but those are my main concerns is the materials of the building and it not fitting in the neighborhood. I'm done. Thank you, Kathy. Anybody else? Who else is out there? Ross. Uh, Ross. Um, on the on the picture from the Price Avenue side of the building with the big uh, the telephony companies have put up a 5G tower in front of that. So I don't believe that's reflected in any of your reviews as well as that 5G tower intrudes within the property. So their request of a zero setback is already not valid because the tower is about two and a half, three feet inside of the sidewalk. So everything that we're looking at conceptually is, is skewed off because this tower is already encroaching on all the pictures and everything that you're seeing. Is that Mr. it, Ross? Chairman. Yes. All right. Let's have the applicants. Uh, who's there? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, it's Mike yes. Shannon. Hi, Mike. Are you representing the Good applicants? E Good evening, sir. Yes. Good evening. What are we going to do about this? We've got no time left. Are you going to request a special meeting? Yes, I solemnly swear that I solemnly swear. Uh, right. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I find myself agreeing with you 100% uh, that it would not be appropriate to conduct the uh, vote this evening. And I would respectfully request a special meeting for the reasons uh, you were, I think, about to state. And uh, we would appreciate the accommodation and uh, the fact that you went an hour past what other um, architectural review commissions are doing speaks to your dedication to the process. And we'd respectfully request a special meeting at your earliest convenience. Thank you. Bylaws uh, generally require three commissioners to agree on a special meeting, and there are three of us left. Do we agree? Yes. Sean? Yes. All yes, right, sir. staff, you need to set that up, please, and check with everybody, see when we can do it. Uh, there are, I happen to agree with uh, the idea that both a demolition and the proposed rehab of the remaining structures need to be addressed in a lot more detail. We don't know how the demolition would be uh, finished out, what would happen to the rear of the building, exactly where the cut would be or anything else. And I still have an issue with the corners of the building and with the brick pasted onto the third and fourth stories at the corner, which looks like brick pasted on to a foreign uh, part of the building as opposed to an extension of the bottom two stories. That's a big problem. Any other comments? Understood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you for waiting so long. Were you the uh, one who was left uh, with the assignment to watch this to its bitter end? <laughs> Or are there, Actually, are there the others other people, here with you who have shared your uh, pain? There's others on. There's they others they on. are. Thank you. Yes, they're all here. They're all okay, here. well, Thank hello, everybody. Time. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we have one more uh, deal with the election of officers. We have insufficient people to consider that. Maybe we okay. can take it up at the special meeting or a business meeting. Do we have a motion? To Real quick. 
Yes. I do want to know the letter that Mark Travillis sent out today said you have to run the special meetings past Jamie before committing to them. So we're going to need his approval for it as well. Uh, the special meetings, I have to go through Mark? No, you have to go through Jamie to approve it. Fine. Uh, if we if we have no city support, we have no meeting. Okay. One last item on the agenda. Is there one last old business item on the agenda before we kind of part? Oh yes, there is. That I'm very very sorry. We need to look at this. Is anybody left for the? Uh, the old business is going to be moved to next month's meeting. They've requested okay. to not have that. Since, but thank you. That was that changing Jonathan the door Avenue? for Sullivan's project. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm I'm representing that applicant as well, and we would like to table that till next month. Very well. Do we have a motion to continue? So moved. So moved. Okay. Uh, I'll down. take yours as a second, Sean. Moriarty. Yes. yes. Conyers. Yes. Decker. Yes. Continued. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you all for your patience. Appreciate Thank it you. very much. We'll wait Thanks, to hear from Jack. staff. Good night. Good job, Sarah. Good night, everybody. Good job, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Hello? Jacqueline, can you do, do you have the power to stop the recording on that? Oh, uh, let me double check. Because I it got it kicked Please. me off yet again. And okay. um uh, I can't get back on so okay let me see if i can do this okay if uh, if not then <laughs> i'll just record forever you guys can know stuff's going on uh, um it just gives me the option to see i don't think i have the option to hang on stop. okay okay hang on a second sure. yeah this just completely died on me trouble the whole time and i see there's three of them um, <laughs> yeah that's where we're at oh gosh all right let me try again now, let's say if the WebEx closes, it will automatically save within the WebEx file the recording. Yeah, I just, um, I think we need to stop the recording first. I'm not okay. sure if like,